Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Players Tour 3 coverage. We're about to start top eight. So you guys just watched uh, Christian Calcano and Affin Rose talk about the top eight players, who made the cut, who didn't, and what decks we were going to see facing off against each other. Yeah, we got uh, Hall of Famer Ben Stark, and uh, we have Dennis Chang, and yeah, we got we have uh, Orzov Garayan versus Bant, and should be a should be an interesting one. I think it's very interesting the way that these pairings just happen to get seeded is that we've got this double mirror match happening. We've got Logan Nettles and Ray Hirayama. We've got the, that's a double reclamation match. We've also got Isaac Egan, and we've got uh, William Craddock going up against each other with John Sacrifice. I think uh, we might be ready to roll here. Ooh, so we're going ben to pop into the Dennis and Ben match. So yeah, this I is think... uh, Dennis Chen and Ben Stark. Uh, Two very different decks here. And we saw some discussion actually in the chat happening about one card in Bant Ramp that happens to be well positioned against Ben's deck. Uh, this deck has a bit of sacrifice through Doom Foretold and a bit of discard through Burglar Rats. And what happens to stop both of those? Uh -huh. It's Tamio. There's Absolutely. two copies of Tammy in this Bant deck. Yeah, uh, unfortunately though, it doesn't stop the Fen Lurker, but stopping the rats yeah. is definitely a big game. But uh, I know if you're Ben, you got to be pretty happy uh, that you have uh, Bant in the quarters as the match you're facing off. So, and he's got a Fen, and he's on the play as well, right? Because he was the fourth seed and starts things off with Fen Lurker, which is exactly what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. Turn two Fen Lurker into a turn three treacherous blessing. Going to draw three cards off this and have a full hand. Yeah, it's a pretty amazing start for Ben. Oh, wow, and he picked up three lands, which is exactly what his exactly. hand is yeah, looking for in this spot. That just smooths out the next, the next two turns. Yes. But yeah, like, uh, yeah, cards like Teferi are not really that problematic for this deck because Ben isn't really trying to play on his opponent's turn. So... As you know, so one I did play with this deck a little bit, and I feel like one of the interesting things was like when to play, when like to attack with like the like the rats and the lurkers and such. Because when you do attack with them, like you know, it's only one damage, sure, but obviously like all, all the damage adds up. But mm -hmm. you got to be careful when you decide to attack because you really want them to stick around for the for the Yorians in the future turns, and the sharks can just come in and eat them. So, luckily, There's quite a few uh, sharks that are yeah. Luckily for Benny's made, and there could have even been a shark made there. There could have been a two-two shark that would have just blocked that fin lurker, traded into it, uh, assuming yeah. they pumped or just eat yeah. It. Yeah, I was gonna say Ben. Luckily for Ben, he had the friend lurker, so it's not. So basically, the shark would be trading in that spot, which Dennis doesn't want because I think Dennis wants to just try to defend like his planeswalkers here. Uh, drawing the gust is pretty brutal, but the Nissa is a welcome sight for sure. Hello there, Nissa. Although it is a little awkward though because Ben has double oath of Kaya, so. Ben, Ben will be able. Oh, he's got the Mortify as well, so Ben can just pick off these these lands. And Dennis is uh, pretty low on resources here, thanks to the lurkers. And there's also a completely dead card in hand, Aether Gust, my favorite anti gruel propaganda. <laughs> Hits nothing in an Orzov deck. Nope. Not even yeah. No no uh, no random hybrid cards either. But, um, yeah, this, I know that this land is definitely not long for this world. At least the gust, the, the gust does do one thing. It gives you discard fodder. Yes, it means, <laughs> hey, you don't have to make a choice. If a burglar rat came down there, it would be like, all right, bye, Aether Gust. I yeah. don't miss you. <laughs> Let's see here. You're seeing a little bit of damage hitting Nissa there, but Nissa is still... Be there might be some consideration to plussing her without animating a land in future turns after that second oath of Kaya hits. But yeah. here comes, I think Teferi is about to land. 
Or maybe it's yeah. going to be a small hydroid crisis. Well, it's not a small one because we have the Nissa, the Nissa static here, giving yep. Dennis Doubling a total of eight forests. mana. Oh, not going for the attack with the breeding yep. pool, making the full six six hydroid crisis, refilling the hint. Somehow not drawing any lands though. Yeah, that was a, definitely a big time play for Dennis. But yeah, bricking on lands is pretty brutal, and mm -hmm. the Oath of Kaya is going to be enough to finish off the Nissa here. So yep. that's a uh, very good turn for Ben. Bye, Nissa. Still, yeah. those the life gain from those Othakai is helping negate the damage being dealt by Treacherous Blessing. Uh, ben is still at 13 life and facing off against these two creatures. And there's that Tamiyo I mentioned before. Uh, I do think that she's very useful in this matchup. Absolutely. Um, interesting, though, like, Ben... Ben doesn't have, like, a Yorian or anything to follow up the next turn with, and he's only going to have seven mana next turn. So that means he can't just, like, pick up the Yorian from the Companion Zone and slam it. So, you know, Ben's going to get taken down to eight life here. So he's got to be a little careful, I would say, because he doesn't want to get too low to the point where, like, he gets locked out of the game with the Blessing. Which we've seen in a lot of matches. A lot of the times where we've seen this Orzhov deck lose is where they get down to the last few life and they're just not able to cast anything safely. Yeah. Yeah, we saw we saw Seth uh, just he needed just one needed one more life to be able to kind of claw back into the game, but the blessing trigger was uh, too much. So we could, you know, we could see something similar come up here. Dennis is in the tank. Here's Fabled Passage. Fetching a fourth land. Well, fifth land. One of them is a creature. And here's Tammy. Tammy. -o. My favorite librarian. <laughs> she's going to go digging. What do you think she's going to look for? I think we're probably going to see a plus. I would say maybe like Shark Typhoon. Let's see here. A good Shark Typhoon. Let's see. We got oh, it's a, nice to see. Not shatter. Not looking but for could, Teferi for sure, because both there's two yeah, in a hand. I don't, I don't think he names Crisis. Could 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 dig for E C D here, yeah. Oh, okay, he does name Crisis. Name Crisis. I figured maybe okay. he wouldn't want to just because he only has five mana. But And unfortunately no Oros got put into the graveyard there. That's something that you often hope for with Tamiya is that you yeah. get the incidental ooh shortcut of that right into the graveyard. Yeah, absolutely. But Ben one another you know another card that has an interesting interaction in this matchup is that he does have Kaya or Zop Usurper, which can, you know, pick off those Oros in the graveyard before they get escaped. Hmm. How does Ben want to play this turn? Um look at Tamiyo, be sad that she's just <laughs> super cute. <laughs> I think that's what that's I would be like, ah. Oh. I think that's honestly what's going to happen here. Like, Ben doesn't really have that many great plays. Like, playing the Prince here. <laughs> you could blink the Fenlurker, but... Like, Dennis has four cards in hand. At least one of them can be discarded. We already know about the Aether Gust. That's just fodder for discard. Yeah. So he does go for an attack. I guess he's very happy to trade with the land here. Because the land is a huge threat. Mm -hmm. As well as, like, it puts Dennis back. And it does Dennis, take Dennis? six mana to pump yeah. that Fenlurker up to being a 3-3. Three, three. I think, yeah, I think if I'm Dennis, I just let this go. Tamio, he can't kill Tamio, no matter what he does. Even if he pumps oh. once and then O oh, still can't kill it. Plus, if he had O, oh, he'd probably just kill the pool immediately. So, yeah, I think just let Tamio take the damage. And Ben's best play is just to blink, To sorry, I say blink, uh, to pick up the Yorian from Exile and then... Maybe we might see like some life gain here, honestly. Oh, and to clarify, when yeah. we mentioned discard there, we were talking about Yerix Fenlurker, which is not actually a discard. It yeah, exiles exile. from hand. Yes. yes. <sighs> yeah, this Charming Prince gaining that life is pretty huge here. Ben, ben just kind of needs like one turn to try to take over the game. He would get the Yorian loop with the Prince. He would get the Oath trigger to kill the land, get the Yorian to block the shark, and then he get to draw three more precious cards. So this uh, this next turn is uh, going to be pretty critical. We, like, Dennis could get back a land with Tamio here and Crisis for four, but I'm not sure if that might be enough. 
One of the tricky parts about your index is most of the potential targets for Brazen Barber, you do not want to put back into their hand because they'll get a lot more value out of it. Yeah, pretty much everything in Ben's deck has like an ETB effect. So uh, he's offering up the pool. Let's see if Ben goes for the trade. He does. That breaks up the the um, the the Yorian Prince shenanigans. Let's see if this let's see if this borrower gets uh, flashed in here to petty theft. I mean. Nope, takes the trade. I assume this Tamiyo is going to get back a land here. Honestly, like, Teferi, Teferi on the Lurker is not bad at all. He's got the Gust to get rid of, so doesn't really mind. I think, and he's, got on, he's on 21 life, so he can just get back the pull and shot, no problem. Okay, right, and it was the land coming back from the graveyard. Yeah, so Dennis, to five. yeah Dennis definitely needs as much mana as possible in this situation. Although Tamio being on two, it means it's definitely going to die next turn. If you bounce the, the, the well, bouncing the lurker, hmm, it's a tough spot, honestly. Ops not to. Here we go. So not seeing an attack first, going yeah. right into Yorian. Yeah, Ben doesn't want to risk his lurker to a shark, like I mentioned earlier. And this Oaf is probably going to be finishing off the Tamiyo unless Dennis uses the Gust to bounce it, but I don't think that's what he wants to do. I think he just wants to draw a land, like, pretty bad. Yeah, Brazen Borrower is able to respond there and put something into hand, but then that thing could just be played. There's still yeah. three mana open on Ben's side of the battlefield, which is enough to replay any mm -hmm. of the three targets being bounced. Yeah, and Ben, we saw Ben did play an untapped land that turn to make sure he played around Dennis's one dispute. So no Temple of Silence this turn. Tough turn for Dennis there. Hmm. And Ben will also be healing back up to 10 life here with the re-trigger yeah. of Oath of Kaya. And that's important because being at seven was pretty risky in case another Nissa got found. Yeah, Ben was definitely, uh, he was teetering in the danger zone there, but he's been able to stabilize pretty nicely. Wow, he is gusting the, the Tamiyo. Hmm. Oh, yeah. oh, he gusted to the bottom to fizzle the Oath trigger. Nice, very nice. So that ben way there's no be, life yeah. being gained, so never mind on what I said. Yeah. Keeping Ben at seven life is definitely important to him. Yeah, absolutely. That was a pretty big time play there. Dennis is just trying to... I think Dennis is just going to bounce to Yorian, honestly. Oh, no, well, yeah, he's going to bounce with the fairy. Yeah. Put, wow, what a turn. And, and that's Dennis five damage so in well. the air. That's, that's, that's a huge amount yeah. of just... Hidden damage, and there's a second bounce in hand. We've got the second Teferi visible here. Yeah, although luckily for Ben, he is going to two life, which means that he will get to... He will be able to safely heal up by oh. rebouncing Oath of Kaya. Yeah, he will He will get to bounce Kaya. And, and, and Teferi, Teferi, you know, I guess Teferi could have, like, bounced Oath here, but then he would just lead on... He would lead on Oath there to get the life first and then Yorian again, so we won't be seeing that. But yeah, Ben can't play any other spells though. Ben has to it Yorian. It has here. to be Yorian. Can attack to Teferi first. Um, I don't think it's necessary. I think it's better to use the Oath of Kaya on the Teferi. No, 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 I think he he definitely he needs to kill a flyer here. So I think we will be seeing oh. him attack. He won't I don't think he cares about trading for a one one shark in this spot. So he kills the fairy and then he Yorians the borrower and he'll be on four life here. Yeah. This is a close game. Really like the way that they've both played. Den Dennis had some really big time heads up plays to to even get to a spot where, you know, Ben is literally staring death in the face on one life of a blessing in play. Yep. And while the Treacherous Blessing is in exile from the Yorian trigger, there is an opportunity to play a Glass Casket here, uh, permanently removing the Shark or temporarily removing the Brazen Borrower. 
Uh, it's a little risky knowing that the opponent is on bad ramp. They do have to furs. They can bounce things and free them. Uh, that's why I do like glass casketing sharks. Yeah, getting rid of the token here is good. Ooh. Yeah, the Berber Rat is going to make sure that Dennis loses his, his entire hand here with the Lurker coming back. Here comes the Rat. Yeah. And that's some strong hand attack there and glass casket wow. as well. Goodbye, what a Shark. Turn. What a turn. Yeah, so we're going to see the Fen Lurker re entering the battlefield. You've got Oath of Kaya turning this game around at one life. Yeah, wow. Yeah, now if um, we saw another Yorian there too. Yeah, I mean, ooh, Oro, Oro into land, Oro into land to escape. Nope, we don't see it. That may, that could have been, that could have been, oh, although the casket was in play, the casket hangs around to blink again to get rid of the Oro. Yeah, this, uh, this game is looking really good for Ben. Although, while Ben, while Ben is most likely going to run away with this one at this point, it was nice to see that it, it would appear that Dennis's plan is just to try to probably try to pressure Ben as much as possible because try try and make the blessings a liability because otherwise otherwise like the long game even though Dennis has crisis the long game is probably going to favor Ben was that yes was Yorian... that the full board blink. That's the full oh board blink. Oh my goodness. The full board blink yeah. into a doom foretold. This is going to just be a horribly destructive Yorian turn. There are so many triggers happening here. You've got Oath of Kaya, Treasure's Blessing, drawing the cards. Glass Casket, nothing to exile. Who even cares about that? Burglar Rat, discard. Very expend mm. lurker. Exiling. And then and and another gonna, Yorian. Yeah, another Yorian back into trigger. play. Because it was two Yorians entering the battlefield. They chose to sacrifice the one that had just come in using its blink trigger to get everything else off the board and bring it back. Welcome to Value Town. <laughs> Population, big noodle in the sky. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty sick turn from Ben there. Got a full grip. It's got the Yorian and the, and the token in play. It's got everything coming back. On end step here. Yeah, you this can is maybe... what it looks like when this deck goes off. Yeah. By the way, is... we have not seen that in the last few games. We've gotten a cast with it, but seeing those crazy huge Yorian blinks is fantastic. Yeah, definitely. We see we see the the full the full power of this deck here. And that was Oro entering the battlefield only to be removed by this delayed glass casket. This glass casket was just hiding in exile. <laughs> Yeah, it comes that. out and it says, oh, hey there, Uro, I see that you are a CMC3 or less. Yeah, it gets put into the Phantom Zone. And that's <laughs> lethal. Bump up that Fen Lurker, make it a nice spooky horror. And nice. what I thought was a, a clutch game for yeah. for Dennis, won by Ben. Yeah, pretty, pretty good stuff from both players, honestly. Really like the way Dennis played and Ben was able to just, you know, just have enough life to be able to turn the corner and just kind of snowball to the win here. Let's see what we got here. We're seeing Ben's D Spark side. and D Spark. Um, that's a, actually a pretty interesting card to see brought in here since it does miss a lot of targets. It doesn't hit Fairy, it doesn't hit Brazen Borrower, it doesn't hit uh, Hydroid Crisis or Uro. Yeah. It's Although, Tamio, though. And Tamio was like the card that wrecks in this matchup. Yeah, so while it does it does yeah it does miss a lot of those cards, but it does hit Nissa and ECD. Like I guess Nissa is a card that I feel Ben probably feels like he just has to get it off the battlefield the moment it gets there because if if Dennis just has like you know more than one turn with the huge like mana advantage of it, it could just be too much for Ben to you know kind of come back from because he gets like buried by like a giant crisis etc. So. It's probably the thought there. Um, these caskets, I don't think he wants all of them. I, I like. I don't think. I think because I think Dennis is probably taking out his borrowers here. They're not that great unless unless he feels that the plan of like pressuring him is is the way to go. Then we might still see them in there. But 
obviously, you know, he doesn't want to be using petty theft too often. Some hmm. of those Oath of Kaya's come out. I feel that the life gain off those Oath of Kaya's has been extremely important in all the games we've seen. Yeah, absolutely. We see Ben keeping, oh no, he's in the tank on uh, Elspeth's son's nemesis. Looks like he's, yeah, he's almost at time. Wow, getting rid of all the caskets, eh? So Really? No. I feel like glass caskets fantastic in this matchup. Yeah, I feel like you'd want at least one, right? Because yeah, because it, it hits Shark, Borrower, and Uro, um, Prasis. Prasis, Oro, yeah, and... and, and and Nissa lands? Fact, Does yeah. it hit Nissa? Yeah, it hits Nissa it lands does. too. Yeah, no, and like the fact the fact that like you have two targets that you know you're fine blinking the casket with, like if they have if you hit a crisis or a shark token, you know, it's like you get a free casket trigger down the road with all the Yorians. So that was definitely interesting to see them take those out. Especially being on the draw too. But we did see Dennis bring in the vetoes here. I think that was probably just a clean swap, right? Like veto for Gus maybe but I think like I said I think he definitely wants like Gus and sorry he definitely wants like disputes and uh veto but I'm not sure hmm, I'm not sure maybe he maybe he did take out the borrowers though maybe he he thinks that he can go along with Ben although I'm not I'm not sure I mean maybe being on the play he feels he has the luxury to go along but I really liked the plan in the last game of like trying to just go at Ben's life total. But no lands here is tough for Dennis. Being a ramp deck with no lands. Mm. Ben takes Love off. Love to see it, hate to see it. Well, if you're Dennis, you definitely hate to see it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah, Ben is Ben is all about it. Ben was able to had a land on that growth spiral for for Dennis there. I did see uh, that was holding up the mana for Dovin's veto. Yeah. Well, let's see here. What does? Oh, here comes Elspeth. Ooh, no! Yeah. Here does not come Elspeth. <laughs> Elspeth going to the graveyard where she can come back later. She does have an escape cost of six. Yeah, that's definitely not the card you're looking to veto if you're Dennis, but he doesn't have much of a choice in this situation. I think if you're Ben, you're probably pretty happy with the development so far. That's a wee tiny 2-2 Hydrate Crisis mm -hmm. drawing a card. Thankfully, a land. Dennis does need lands at this point. Um, getting that land does help Nyssa come out onto the battlefield, or Elspeth conquers death. Or even potentially Uro into Teferi. Yeah, so this was a big time draw from Ben here. Blessing yeah, you got speed. Agonizing Remorse, get to take a peek at this hand and say, oh, what horrifying things do you have? I think one of these needs to be exiled. Blessing into Remorse is a pretty savage beating. Interesting, I feel like it has to be between Elspeth Conquers Death and Nyssa here. He has yeah, I think taking smart. out Nyssa um, is a great proactive play. I think that this deck can survive Elspeth Conquers Death, especially at this point. Look at all the Yorians. By the way, I, I want to point yeah. out that Ben has a surplus of Yorian right now. Yeah, so that's, that's what's interesting. You this many Yorians, sir. Yeah, like, okay, that makes sense. So the fact that Ben has all these Yorians means that he really wants his blessing to stick around. So even though Nyssa is, like, a huge turn for, for Dennis here, Ben has the the D-Spark to, you know, to deal with it. So it's only going to be around for one turn. And, yeah, he, he really he's really valuing being able to cast these Yorians in the future turns and draw some more cards and try to end the game that way. There was not a land drawn, so there's not a guaranteed Uro into Teferi. So we are going to see Nissa come down, probably animating that breeding pool to hold up for Growth Spiral. Yeah, definitely. But you know, if you're if you're Dennis, like you know, this I feel like this is what you want to be doing. But yeah, this next turn is going to be pretty huge here. Gonna see some heat happen here. Ooh. Oh, another agonizing remorse. Or do you take care of that that Nissa first? Say yeah, first, you can't have your mana. Yeah, first thing is first. D spark there. Dennis has to spiral now. 
hand. It was not a land hit. It was a dream trawler. Dream trawler is a big one. If mm-hmm. Ben doesn't get rid of this land here, then a, la- a top deck land could could switch things over and see if we see a mortify on the land. That could be that could be a big game. It definitely could. That would reset the mana down to four. Do you do yeah. not have Nissa's passive anymore, giving you that extra mana. Thankfully, there was another land drawn. Yeah, it's definitely, I would say it's definitely, like, slightly of a risky play. Like, he could have played Doom Foretold, but then, you know, he gets the, rid of the Krasis, and then he's forced to get rid of, like, either his Blessing or the Doom Foretold himself. So that's not, like, a great use of his mana. So, yeah, taking, the, taking out the land is pretty huge. Sets back Dennis at a full turn. And also, it was the most uh, threatening card there. Hits a land here. We're going to see double shocks coming in in order to land to ferry. Yeah, I think we're going to. If you're Dennis, you're probably going to attack and then bounce the crisis here. Try and Being set able up to replay for a the one. crisis. Um, I don't know that the crisis wouldn't get very, very much bigger. It would become a four-four crisis if it gets recast. But there's enough mana in hand for Dream Trawler. Uh, a Bit of risk, though, only having one card in hand against a deck that's so good at emptying hands. Yeah, like, you'd have two cards if you minus the Teferi, though. No, uh, you have three now, right? Because uh, the Krasis goes back to hand, then he draws. Oh, well, yeah, and you draw if yeah. if you go for the minus. He knows. Teferi. He know. Yeah, he knows. Ben has the Yorian, so he, it looks like he tanked on the blessing there, but he opts to plus instead. I guess he. I guess but, he's just planning on playing the the trawler. But yeah, this fen lurker is nope. definitely going to be There goes. Here. There goes dream trawler straight into exile. Not even fuel for Uro, and doom foretold, saying you must choose your hydroid crisis or your Teferi. Choose wisely. When your opponent yeah. is at seven life and you've got a two two flyer in the air. But yeah, your rough. only form of card advantage here is that to fairy. What do you do? So we're seeing the oh, Hydroid wow. Crisis go into Graveyard, and that allows the Uro to be played from Graveyard or Hydroid Crisis from the hand. Definitely a big time draw there. And I it's uh, it's okay. very clear that anything in the hand, if it's not like a full hand, is going to just be discarded. Yeah. Because... There's a Yorian that was put from the sideboard into hand by Ben Stark. That one is visible. And two other Yorians, which we can see, but Dennis can't. Mm, Nissa and Dovin speed off the top. You might see a bounce of the foretold here to set set um, Ben back on mana here. Ooh, does he want to play that land? He opts to play it, but I'm not sure. Because you know that you're going to have to exile at least one card. Because the Yorian blank Yorian is big enough to just sit in front of that Hydroid Crisis. It's only a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah. Looks like, yeah, Ben still stuck on six mana, though. So you, he won't be able to Yorian plus Lurker in the same turn here. He can, like, he can Agonize your Remorse and Doom for Phil, though, which is still a fine turn. I think if you're Ben, that's what you're probably going to do. Because even if Dennis's hand is bad, you can still exile the row in the yard, so... Yeah. You gotta, seven, get the, you gotta seven, get something out to deal with that Hydroid Graces, though. I mean, a seven life is rough, though. Mm-hmm. Ben has to be pretty careful here. Going down to six life, that treacherous blessing. Yeah, he opts for the Yorin here to be able to block the Krasis with Teferi on two. He doesn't have to worry about it getting bounced. This Vito, I'm sure, is going to be out of here. See you later, Dovin's Vito. And drawing too many cards. Got to throw one of those into the graveyard. Yeah. And uh, maybe it's going to be one of the Yorians. I don't know. At, at what point do you stop holding on to all the Yorians? Um, well, in this spot, you know, he's probably going to want them all. He gets rid of the remorse because he's pretty low on life. But, you know, he, he did manage to find one land. He definitely needs mana in this spot. Then we're going to see a Nyssa into, into Uro here. 
I think it's really funny how people will be like, oh, 80 cards, you know, very inconsistent deck. And here we see Ben just like, I've got my Yorian, my <laughs> Yorian, my Yorian, and from my sideboard, my Yorian. <laughs> quad, quad Yorian's here. But yeah, um, here let's see here. Nissa. Um, yeah. Already saw, I think, one of only two D Sparks used. There's a dream trawler. Ooh, dream trawler. That dream trawler is not going to stay in the hand, though. So Ben, I wonder how many cards Ben has in the yard. Because Ben probably wants this Elspeth to come back as soon as possible to gain. Oh, there's Orzov. There's uh, the Orzov usurper. Hi, Kaya. Hmm. Kaya, see. not able to exile any permanents from the board. He's able to hit some cards in the graveyard, but of course, Oro's already on the battlefield. Uh, mortifying Oro and exiling it with Kaya is possible, but that does leave you with just your two blockers. Nissa is still able to keep hitting you with things. There's no way to kill Nissa with the cards in hand. No, unfortunately not for Ben, so this is a pretty tough turn. He's, I think he probably wants to get this Lurker on the battlefield, perhaps. Just to have, like, an extra blocker for, like, the extra 3-3 three, three that's coming down. Um, or we might see Mortify on Uro, or Mortify on the Krasis. Okay, so he's scared okay. of the Flyer here. Um, still potentially four mana. We're seeing uh, Teferi get permanently mm -hmm. removed. I see, yeah, because Teferi... Castle Lock, Twain, and Doom Foretold. Yeah, saying, get rid of your Uro or your Nissa, choose wisely. Yeah, Teferi... I think... Yeah, Teferi um, would have bounced the Ori in there, so he needed to get rid of it. I think Ben is in a tough spot, actually. Because no matter what, he's going to go down... Like, let's, No matter what... Dennis keeps, he's going to go down to one. So he's just going to be locked out of the game here. Oh, no, well, I guess he, no, he, he well, he sacrifices the blessing to the Doom Foretold, and that'll allow him to, like, get out of it again. But, yeah, I mean, if, if we see, like, a t another Teferi come down, then that could bounce the Doom Foretold, and then Ben would be completely locked out. And it's a tough one to decide. There goes Nissa. So we're seeing a prioritization of Oro. Ooh, there it is, actually. That, that's good enough. The ECD, yeah. The ECD. ECD should lock it up. He gets to exile the, the Doom Foretold. And now Ben has no way to get rid of the Blessing. Wow, what a draw from Dennis. The only thing that could be blinked is nothing, because the second you cast a spell, you're dead. And now we're going to see, I believe, a concession. If it were me, I would activate my castle lock twain, by the way. <laughs> um, I feel style. like that's the, the brave, powerful way to go. <laughs> that way you, you also end at, like, negative six life, which is... That's pretty sweet. Pretty good. Nope, but Ben goes the old-fashioned way of the concede button there. And the old escape go concede. We're going to go to a game three. I wonder if Ben might reconsider these caskets here. No, he just snaps it off. Oh my gosh. Just, no. I feel both of us are like, we want to see those glass caskets. We want to see them in play. Oath of Kaya, real good at getting rid of those Nissa lands. Can uh, take out some sharks and smaller hydrate crisis. And Ben's just like, I know what I'm doing. He's played mm -hmm. this deck a whole lot more than we have. Yeah. All right, here we go. For all the marbles here. Ooh, ben. Oh, oh my gosh. Snaps it. <laughs> Look at this hand. This hand is snaps cruel. This hand is like, allow me to see your secrets <laughs> and discard them. Allow me to see your secrets and discard them. Or exile, actually, in this case. Agonizing remorse can completely interrupt this game plan. Hey, you cannot have ramp. There goes the growth spiral. This is now a hand that's just a whole lot of lands and uh, some cards that really want to be cast with a lot of mana 
Hydroid Crisis for one might be like the sad and embarrassing play. Um, <laughs> yeah, but only, Nissa, he, might, he might have to do it though, honestly. Um, that was a, by the way, that was a big time draw from Ben. Ben gets the double oh spell this turn. He know, oh, he's guaranteed no. a hit off the rest. The rest he already the knows round. about the Nissa. There goes Nissa. You've now seen the hand. You know that there's a Hydroid Crisis. Goodbye, Hydroid Crisis. Okay. Yeah. Maybe not. Like, because Hydroid Crisis know, is not that useful right now, so I do get yeah. this. No, yeah, he can. No, he can definitely wait on the uh, on the remorse here, and you know the rat's nice. He gets a, he gets the one one into play, and honestly, getting rid of a land is actually kind of a big deal, because mm -hmm. Dennis, Dennis needs all the resources he can get to try and get a, a big crisis here. He's a ramp deck. Uh, we might see an agonizing remorse and duress here again. Yeah, the duress is a bit of a risky play. Because you don't know about the cards in hand. Oh, yeah, because um, here comes the Fenlurker. And Fenlurker does use up both black mana, so you can't also duress. Yeah. And yeah, that gonna... is a fabled passage. Yeah, Ben decides to just get on the battlefield here. I think this forest is gonna go, and we're probably just gonna see Dennis fire off this crisis as a three-three. Uh, that is not the fault of Auto Tabber, um, as people seem to be calling out in the channel. Yarrick's Fenwalker costs two black mana. There's no yep. other way to cast it. Yep. Definitely no auto taps here. Here comes the crisis as a three-three, I believe. It's not the worst here. Puts a body on the board, draws him a card. Ooh. But so yeah, we're it's... seeing a lead with a duress. And seeing a Teferi and a Growth Spiral Teferi is going to be Gonzo there. Yerick Svenmarker getting rid of the last card. Goodbye, Growth Spiral. And you see you see Ben opt to hold the uh, remorse because if uh if um if uh, Dennis finds an Uro down the road, he can at least use the remorse to get rid of that, regardless of it's in his hand or in the yard. But a pretty big time draw from from Dennis here. Tamio, a plus draw right here. Tamio is definitely a big game, and he's got the crisis to defend it as well. Mm -hmm. And Ben being stuck on mana means he can't, you know, can't really pump these. Uh, these uh, Fen Lurkers. So Dennis is actually, even though like uh, Ben ripped apart his hand pretty quickly, the top of his deck has been uh, very kind to him in this situation. Now he's got like a an engine going that Ben can't going really to interact with. Nissa or Elspeth Conquers Death named here. One Nissa's already exiled from. I think or, if, actually, I yeah. think it's in the graveyard. I think it was hit with the duress. I think if you're, um, I think if you're Dennis, you just want more crisis at this point. Yep. Give me that crisis. Because you can hit crisis, crisis going up land, to Um, there's no targets here for agonizing remorse other than the stuff in the graveyard. Yeah, so this oh, is just not a even going turn. to see a uh, an attack at Tamio. Just seeing Yorian get put into put into hand. Let's see what uh, he's. Oh, he can get back the Nissa here and put put up even more defenses. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, like, remorsing the Nissa may have been, you know, it was definitely an option. It means that it, it can't be brought back with an Elspeth Conqueror's death or by Tamio's minus three. Yeah, because now, because Nissa on this board is kind of, like, Nissa will take over the game Nissa very is quickly. filthy. Yeah. And Ben has just no way to deal with it at all. And, like, these, you know, the, like, Yorian... Yorian isn't even going to be enough to pressure either Walker. I guess he could know if if, he, if if Dennis minus is for the for the for the Nissa, then it could it could pressure the Tamio, but he still has the Crisis that can block for a turn. Oh, there is a clock warning on Dennis. Uh, we are at game three here, but there are only eight possible minutes of playtime on the side of the battlefield. Assuming yeah. we're using the game clock. Yeah, I believe we are, but I don't think that it'll end up coming up in this game. I think this game, like, I feel from the looks of it, it looks like Dennis is going to start to run away with this pretty soon. Once, like, like Dennis's next turn is probably going to be huge. He opts... Let's see. Did he... Did he Tamio a land? 
Is that what happened there? Yeah, that was getting the the temple. Interesting. And now risking Tamio here. Uh Yerick Svenlerka can be pumped. And there she goes. Wow, yeah. I'm a little surprised by that, honestly. I feel like getting like even even if Ben has like the even if Ben has the like the D Spark or the E C D or something for the Nissa, you still have the you know, you still have like your other planeswalker in play. So I don't know. He did bring in the disputes for the Yorians. All right, minus oh. on. I see. So that's his line here. Minus on the crisis to run it back. on the crisis. Oh, I wonder but if I... we're gonna see that mystical dispute held up though. Crisis for four, hoping to just draw a blue mana source. But oh no, they already played a land because they played the temple. So oh, that was a turn before. Never mind. I mean, the didn't crisis, hit a land. <laughs> like crisis is okay here, but it's not that great, right? Because Ben just gets to. He doesn't get both of them, but. Oh, but he's going to remorse and take his best cards here. Oh, here's an opportunity to exile a Boro or a Nessa. Yeah, not drawing a uh, blue land off that crisis was rough because it meant that uh, you, were, you were now subject to possibly Yorian coming down and blinking those two discarders. Yeah, this is actually a really tough spot for Ben because like, pretty much all these cards are just pretty big game in this spot. Like, even the dispute, since Ben has the Yorian, and he's stuck on five mana. So, yeah, uh, I'm not... What do you even take in this spot? Um, we're going to see the second Remorse for sure, so I guess we're going to see Remorse and Uro bite the dust here. And Ben is playing, playing a little risky with the life total here. We've talked before about how Treacherous Blessing chips away at life. But so do the shock lands and the agonizing remorses. All right, so Ben opts to go with a dispute here to just make sure that he resolves this Yorian next turn. And Doesn't bolt the land. onto the triome. Yes, maybe he feels he has to cycle to like try to find like a D spark or something down the road. Not sure. You know, I'm thinking about it now, but the casket would be pretty huge in this spot. Just because it'd be able to get the Krasis and the Uro. But we know Ben didn't keep those in. Wow. I think, I think if I'm Dennis, I'm pretty happy with where the game is at right now. He did not, like, Ben was not able to punish him on that Krasis minus there. Now, this could definitely be going much worse. Yeah, so we're going to see a scry. I think he's looking for an untapped land here. Yep. Going to try to close oh, things out smash. here. And yep. uh, we're going to see a as large as possible shark generated. Because sharks win games. So, by not playing this land, now he's... Um, ben is unable to kill this uh, this Teferi for good here. Well, he we know about that shark. We know that there's going to be a blocker. But no, yeah, no, no. Ben knows as well, of course. But the thing yeah. is, like now he so can't. No, yeah, they both know it's revealed. He can't pump. He can't pump and kill the creature at the same time. So the Teferi is definitely going to live this this turn. Hmm. He might just have to slam Yorian then. I don't think he has a choice. But then but then the Teferi would just minus blink the Yorian and kill him. So. I don't I don't think that there's a great plan of action here. You can yeah. swing into Teferi and just kind of know you're going to lose one of these because you can't block on the ground anyway. You have to make sure you have the Mortify, but you can't cast it if Teferi is alive. So you'd have to Mortify this turn on the Hydroid Crisis or on the Shark. Yeah. Um, yeah, he has no choice but to attack here. And I think we're going to see the Mortify. Ooh. Can't do it at instant speed. Again, this is this is Teferi in action, which is brutal. Uh, there oh, goes the Fenlurker. Right. 
Goodbye, Fenlarger. Teferi now not able to minus, which is important. And now this is this is the opportunity to use the Mortify here. That that Elspeth Conqueror's death is not known. So the safer play is using the Mortify over using the, the Yoran. Yeah, the Mortify gets goes. with Crisis here. Does he play the land this turn? Nope. Tough spot for Ben. Gets to Uro. Dennis gets to Uro here and put two lethal threats on the battlefield. Here comes Oro, doing its Oro stuff. Another crisis. Just holding the land in hand. And that was the crisis being drawn off Oro. Yeah, he wants to protect that ECD. Mm -hmm. When you're playing against hand attack, makes sense. The shark still does get in for damage here. Yeah, the shark means that now both threats are lethal. Mm -hmm. And the Teferi's on three. Yeah, I think that's going to do it. Especially with the top deck being a trial. Yeah, the ECD makes sure to clear the way. Yeah, there's there's two forms of removal here. There's not going to be blockers. Pretty, pretty good stuff from Dennis this match. He played very well. And we're seeing the extreme value generated by all these fantastic cards in Bant. You've got things like Elspeth Cocker's death, removing, reanimating. You've got Oro with the draw, the life gain, the huge, terrifying creature, the ramp. Oh. And that is a victory for Dennis. Unfortunately, that means that Ben is not moving on to the semifinals. Uh, and that was some fantastic magic that we got to see. And this is, again, the top eight of Players Tour Number three. Yeah, we uh, the matchup did not go the way I thought it was going to go. I know, you know, this is definitely a matchup that I'm sure they felt good about. So, yeah, but we saw some really stellar play from Dennis there. And, you know, maybe I'm not sure if maybe he had tested this matchup at any point, like throughout the tournament, having seen, you know, that uh, all these players were on it. But, uh, yeah, he navigated those turns pretty well and found the path to victory there. Yep. And uh, again, as I mentioned at the start of the game, I thought that Tamiya would be clutch, and she was. Uh, oh, stopping yeah. those discards is just a fantastic passive ability. A lot of those War to Spark Planeswalkers, you forget about their passives, <laughs> but that's one that's oftentimes relevant. Yeah, Love absolutely. See it. Yeah, so we are saw, going yeah. to uh, take a short break before we get yeah. into another quarterfinals match between, I believe it's Isaac Egan and oh. is it William, William Craddock? Caddick? Yep, it's William Craddock. Those two are going to be facing off against each other after this break. Hello and welcome to The Bolt, the fastest way to get to know the most interesting people in Magic. Right now I'm joined by William Yui Jensen, a, a co-captain, I should say, of Team CFB and a writer for CFB Pro. Yui, where can we find you online? Um, most of the way to engage with me right now is on CFV Pro, um, deck guides, theory articles, and videos. Awesome. We'll get straight into some questions. Do you have a favorite Magic deck ever? Uh, I think my favorite deck is Survival, the fittest trade and rider deck that I won the first Masters series with. Do you have a, a card that you really hate to see across the table from you? Thought Erasure. Do you have an all-time favorite card? Uh, trade, trade Wind Rider. Do you have a favorite art on a magic card? Um, History of Analia. What's the best guild? Azorius. Do you have a favorite tribe? Giants. What's your favorite place you've visited for a magic card? I would like a lot of places, but Las Vegas, Barcelona, Sydney, Tokyo are among my favorites. What is the last movie you saw? I watched 
been so long since I've gone to the movies, obviously, but I've watched Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade a couple days ago. Sweet. What's a movie you hate that everyone else loves? Well, I don't know about hate, but a movie that I didn't like that much that everyone else seems to love is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. What is uh, your favorite song? Favorite song? I like Orange Sky by Alexi Murdoch a lot. One last question. Aggro or Control? I guess I want to say Control, but recently I've really enjoyed, as I've gotten older, I've really enjoyed playing Aggro more. Hello everyone, Ashlyn Rose here with Amy and we are going to be, I would like, let's talk about the last match that just happened. Yeah, what that's was going see, on? That Dennis was intense. Taking a win, uh, Ben Stark unfortunately 
not taken the win there. Um, and I'd like to say he would have had a better chance had he brought in those glass caskets. I might not be the best at knowing when to bring in removal as somebody who hates playing removal, but it seems like it was a good card in that matchup. Yeah, absolutely. And was it just for the the second uh, game three that he took them out, or was it for both? Because he did no, snap. No, both of them. Yeah, okay. He, he, he took out the whole stack of them. It's just like, ah, I don't need this. I don't need this great two-mana removal that hits <laughs> almost every creature threat in the deck. Yeah, and I mean, we saw game three, but where that could have been used, but it happens. Uh, I think we're going to take a look at the new brackets that we have right now. We so have... here we see Dennis moving on. And uh, we are, by the way, going to be spectating the match between uh, Isaac, um, that top matchup there, Isaac Egan and William Craddock. We're going to be watching that one after this little segment here. But we can see that Ray took the win with Timmer Reclamation in the mirror matchup. And looks like Babbage, Sultai Ramps, going to Value Town, taking yeah. a win over Recto Sacrifice. So now we get to see... Will Team of Reclamation stand steady, or will Salty ramp? Will Pull all ahead. of these extremely powerful decks <laughs> face off against each other, and will we be marveling at the actual variety of deck lists here? Oh, I, I know, and I know we keep talking about this, but just looking at the players' tours for Series 2, uh, number one, PT number one, there were six out of eight of the top eight decks were Team of Reclama Reclamation. Two, the other two were Bant Ramp. Okay, so then we have Players Tour number two. And there were four Team of Rec decks, two Jun Sack decks, and then you had like Rakdos Sack and Salte Ramp. And this event, we only had two in the top. And I'm just, it's really interesting because what changed? Like we all, like we, we saw the Orzov deck, which was b brought in to go against Bant Ramp, which is what is expected in this, uh, for this event specifically to show up the most. But then you also have the Rakdos decks. We have the Jun Sack decks. And we've seen those perform really, really well. Uh, Isaac Egan, who we saw seating at that first place right there, he went almost undefeated today. He lost yeah. once. He was so close. He was three win three more wins away from tying with LSV for his 16 and 0 win streak. Three wins. So um, close. So close. Let's see. Do we have uh do we have the deck list for Ray Hiryama and Yuri Babich? I think we do. 1v8. Okay. Yeah, we'll go ahead and take a look again at well, Isaac. Okay. We'll bring up those Jun Sacrifice lists. So this uh, Jun Sack list that Isaac is running, I made a point in the chat of calling out that it has one card in the main deck that is from post Eldrain, And that's Woe Strider. Oh. It's got four copies of Woe Strider because it's really, really good with Priest of Forgotten Gods, Mayhem Devil, all sorts of Sacrifice, Corvald as well. But it's also just... Really good deck. This <laughs> deck did not need to change much. It's got such great synergy. Aquaria didn't really lend anything to this deck. But if you look at the sideboard, there's a spicy, spicy card that you don't see a lot. And that's the Acroan War. Acroan War lets you take over one of your opponent's creatures for two turns and just go to town. It's also kind of like a mini board wipe. If your opponents are running things that have higher power than toughness or equal power to toughness, you end up taking out those cards or forcing your opponent to unfavorable trades. Ooh, spicy. It's spicy, and then, spicy. And I believe Isaac is running two Verascas. I don't think William has any, if I recall correctly. Yes. Oh, William's what a shame. Is That's, much more why tame. would you not play Verasca? She's a, she's a babe. <laughs> and I don't just mean that, like, you know, she's the Golgari queen. Um, I'm a little bit jealous of Jace here. But she's also a fantastic card because her minus is able to take out any of the main, like, small planeswalker threats. Is able to take out Mayhem, Devils, and a mirror match. Even Uro gets killed by, by Vraska. Mm, okay. 
All right. Well, I guess we'll get to see how these two Jun decks fare because we're going into their quarterfinal match. Oh, boy. All right. So let's Drum head roll. right on into that. Soon. And, uh, thank you for chatting with me, Aslan. I look forward to seeing you again between rounds. And here I am back with Christian Calcano. Let's hello, hello. magic happen. Here we are. We got, uh, you know, our player who had the longest undefeated run of this tournament in Isaac Egan, world's uh, top 16 player from 2010. And up against William Craddock, who we saw defeat Seth to get into this top eight. And we got that John Mirror action going on here. Goose, so uh, a goose get eaten. The, the goose, what? the goose is gone. What is going on here? What is? What was it? so that was a turn one goose into a turn two oven goose. Oh, eat. that was the. Oh, that's right. That was the. He claimed his opponent's goose. Oh, it was a claim on the opponent's yeah. goose. I totally missed the claim in the graveyard. Yeah, I. I I also didn't pick it up right away, so I just I was like, all right, what's going on here? Yeah, like, here why, why would you eat your own goose? So, so they're <laughs> they've traded claims and gooses here, but William, big time draw here. He drew the devil. He's got the Strider. He's got all the action here. Isaac now is getting life to try to stay alive long enough to cast his Corvald and Citadel, but he's going to be under a lot of pressure here. We see William, I'd say, did draw the threats first. We've got that Mayhem Devil and a claim at the ready. Yeah. Versus Corvold. Corvold able to come out, snack on a food, get a little bit bigger, draw a card. Yeah, no, this is huge for for Isaac here. He eats the food so he doesn't like lose on mana. And William has no way to take it down unless he draws like a a um a cat, I believe, maybe. Or no, because the claim, like the claim, is somewhat of a dead card in the spot. You now maybe it looks. I guess he would maybe need a second devil here. Would do the trick. Nope, that's a passage. It's one, two, three, four. With uh, I think yeah, he has enough. Good. Actually, we'd have to like sack his whole board. We'd have to have sack his whole board. He could passage is one. Uh, both the foods is three. Token is four, and then Oven on the Devil is five. That would be enough. I think that it would be also worth swinging in with the Woe Strider and maybe even a Mayhem Devil to try and get the trade here. Yeah, that could actually do the trick as well. Wow, pass is a turn. From those. Oh, nope, just seeing a pass uh, sitting on the Fabled Passage, the two food and the oven or woe strider there lots of different sacrifice potentials i haven't i've not played this matchup enough to know if uh if this i've is never line, played but... this matchup with a bolus's citadel in it and <laughs> oh my gosh i want to see that bolus's citadel just slam down i know that there's like cat oven and that's a lot better value mm -hmm. right here but i want to see the bolus's citadel because it's so fun yeah, it's definitely the card that creates the most uh, shenanigans. But uh, uh, It's the card that lets you occasionally see somebody be like, yo, check this out. Part of the top, part of the top, part of the top, part of the top. <laughs> and it's like just they're just, it it's like they're slinging. It's fantastic. Yeah, um, but it's interesting because Corvald, you know, he, uh, he would get to draw a bunch of cards here off the Corvald. But every... Every sack is a devil trigger. Mm -hmm. And actually just doing this once means that Corfold can be removed. He's going face here. I'm not, yeah, I'm, I'm really not sure about this, honestly. Hmm. I would I, like before that food got generated to see Corvold killed just by Mayhem Devil. Yeah. Yeah, that could have, that could have possibly gotten the job done there. Because the, the Devil Trigger resolves first since, uh, since Isaac is the active player, so it resolves before the Corval draw. 
But yeah, I mean, the window to get rid of Corvold is gone now. So I mm-hmm. think now Isaac, Corvold's dummy thick. Yeah, it's definitely uh, it's definitely a thick one. But I think <laughs> uh, I think that yeah, now with the goose and the trail and the priest, like Isaac is in the driver's seat here. <sighs> yeah, I look think- at this gigantic Corvold. So claim the first born. Um, really just it can't grab this 5 cmc creature there was the crone war in the sideboard uh that could definitely come in off the sideboard for uh some corvold stealing action in the mirror match i'm not sure if that's something that will come into consideration but oh, what a fun thing to see that actually does sound like a big game honestly because coral as you can see is the kind of card that just once you untap like you just go nuts and take over the game. Yeah, there's, it's not- there's not a lot of direct removal for large creatures. So the way that this deck removes things is by stealing yeah. them and sacrificing them or yeah. through Priest of Forgotten Gods, which is yeah. probably why there's going to be a lot of consideration to just keeping it. So Corvold's the only creature on that side of the board. In case there is a Priest top deck, the Priest can be hasted with Claim the Firstborn and there yeah. goes Corvold. And if Corvold's a 10-10 now, hmm. I still don't think Isaac can kill him this turn. But drawing the devil is another big game. Oh, I guess we're going to see a claim here on the Strider. Oh. Okay. Mm. Interesting. Oh, I guess he wants to get more triggers here, maybe? Just draw more cards? Uh, maybe draw another oven? Because you get to scry when you sacrifice the cat. Mm, he oh, lets there's it, still two lands there. William lets, William lets it happen. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think this claim is going to work out here. Oh, just going to eat it with Corvold, I see. Oh, I see. Ah, oh, that's right, the attack much trigger. Man. But why the... not eat the, the Woe Strider? Yeah, yeah, no, he's gonna eat. The, he's gonna. He's gonna eat the. He already used all the ovens, so he eats the. No, I meant. Uh, why didn't Will in in response get rid of it with the, with the oven? Maybe it's possible he was possibly afraid of like another claim on the devil, perhaps, and he probably Maybe. doesn't mind the wolf strider going to the yard here because he just bring it back later. But yeah, that's a. It's still an interesting decision for sure. Um, this Corvold's going crazy. There's only one Corvold in the main board of this deck, and it is doing so much work. Yeah, it's a good time to draw it, for sure. Um, yeah. I remember, in a lot of the earlier Magic Fest online, we saw this deck a ton. Mm-hmm. And also in uh, earlier player stores than that, getting to see the mirror matches between us and having to play around both players getting triggers off Mayhem Devil makes combat math and just general turn math much harder. Oh yeah, it's definitely, uh, there's just a ton to think about. There's just so many possibilities with all these triggers. But yeah, this deck um, yeah, it was definitely a lot more popular going into the first week of these. But it's funny how it was a much better play this week than it was last week. This uh, priest coming down is about to change this game. Oh, yeah, the claim here. Oh, wow. Priest gets claimed, gets haste, untaps. Well, it it wasn't tapped, but untaps. And, oh, my goodness. Here comes the Woe Strider. Don't even have to sacrifice the Mayhem Devil. Just get to sacrifice two little tiny goats. Yeah, this is a huge swing. This means Corbold is gone. Oh, wow. Be so much happening here. And also, the oven is still untapped, which means that that priest is getting cooked. Yeah, that priest is definitely uh, biting the dust here. And yeah, yeah, Isaac's in a world of trouble now. Yeah, because uh, he... there's also going to be a 3 3 attacking in here. Yeah, and he's going to no lose. Food. No way he's to gonna... gain life, except for, I guess, Vraska could like eat an oven, but why would you do that? <laughs> No, I think, yeah, the Rascal's probably going to have to eat this Devil here, which will then get sacked. Devil number two. Wow. And Isaac went from, like, being in a commanding spot to just kind of being dead on board. It's kind of wild. I don't know. I want to see Bolas' Citadel take this game home. Uh, There's just part of the cards. Bolas' yeah. Citadel, uh, Cat 
Cat, cat off the top. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be tough with uh, the the life total being so low here, but yeah, I think it, we're gonna see like Braska on the Devil, and then he just sacks it and puts puts uh, puts Isaac on four, but. Hmm. Yeah, it's a tough, tough call for Isaac here. He's about to time out, though. He's got to make a play. Got to go fast. Yeah. The timer is burning. He's off with the double double line. But the issue with this, though. Hmm. One, double two, devil. three, is that a game? He doesn't have enough to kill. He's gonna get pinged here. I guess he's just gonna go for the. Oh no, he's going for the devil. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is it? no, I feel like it's either one off lethal or two lethal with the uh, cauldron familiar after you eat a mayhem devil here. But as I said before, the combat math gets real tricksy. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Let's see. It's gonna have to sacrifice a devil here to finish off the other one, and then he gets to. Oh no! I thought. Hmm. I thought he Not wanted going to. for the priest. I guess he's gonna go for the priest after. Because he can. I think still... it was lethal though, because you had two off fabled passage, three four off sacrificing the mayhem devil. Five when you sacrifice the food to bring back the cat. Six the cat when the trigger. cat re-enters the battlefield. Seven when you sacrifice the cat again. Eight when you bring the cat back by sacrificing the food. And actually nine. Yeah, there was lethal there. Yeah, but uh, but then if you don't, if you shoot them all at, at William, then I'm not sure if... I, I didn't Would do the math, second but mayhem sure devil if... have died in the middle? No, not that, but... but... Oh, or would he have died to the devil? Yeah, that's what I'm not. That's what I'm oh, not sure. Oh, I thought of. that the life gain from familiar, oh, like, because oh, the other one resolves wow. first. Maybe a, not. Oh no, what a play! What a draw here! Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be it, I believe. Oh no, there it goes. We're gonna yeah, see the because... cat come in. The cat's barely gonna be able to do anything here. Yeah, the cat comes a... in. He goes to five, but then he can just sack. Yeah, they... Cat enters, they eat the food, the food and... Yeah. R.I.P.G.G.E.Z. Wow, what a, what a sweet, sweet game. Yeah, like, Isaac did a good job of kind of somewhat stabilizing again, but then the claim off the top was too much there. Wow, nice game from William. What a gorgeous, gorgeous move, though, earlier in the game. Stealing the priest and using it to sacrifice the Corvold. So we're going to game two. I, you know, definitely a uh, rough one for Isaac there. Look, he looked like he was in a commanding spot, but he does have the better configuration post board, I think, for this matchup. He does have uh, he does have murderous rider, the Acron. He does. War. You know what? I would hear what uh, what Isaac has to say so we've got some audio of isaac during the sideboarding process let's bring it in i'm just gonna cut all of my priests they are quite good but also i post for the tend to die a bit easier but not not for my opponent okay they don't have a lot of removal spells here <sighs> okay all right well it's all about this mayhem devil Rasker is pretty good. I don't have any way to kill Corvold. So. Definitely want to be able to kill the Mayhem Devil. Maybe I'll just go down to one boss of Citadel. Yeah. Well, there you have it there. So it looks like he's just, you know, his whole game plan is to just try to keep the opposing devils off the battlefield. And, of course, he has the removal for the opposing Corvolds. 
Uh, interesting. He, he, you know, he shaved on a bunch of like the combo pieces. Like he shaved on one oven, one, one cat, one Strider. Got rid of all the priests. But he's got the coils. He's got the claims. So he definitely uh, has a lot of action here. As for William, like I said, I'm not sure he brings in too much outside of the one core vault. Well, that's a good opener here. Yep, getting turn one goose is always a pro play. And William on the mulligan here. Hmm. And Close. going for uh going for that green mana coming in tap, not going for that turn one oven, knowing that there isn't a turn two play in hand. Yeah, I guess you know he's just uh he's really hoping to draw like a goose or a trail there. And he has no other green mana, so he doesn't want to be in a spot where he draws them and can't cast them. Um, but yeah, definitely, if you're Isaac, you're pretty happy with how this game has started so far. In the tank on the shock here. It's like, do you hold up Rider so you don't have to use the food, or do you just play and tap with the intent to make a food on end step? Goes for the goes for having the option. There's the woe strider coming in with its best friend, the crazed goat. But before it gets its goat, someone's gonna get its goat. And the oven here, yeah, trying the oven to swiftly here, end it, it gets munched by the oven though. Yeah, the oven here makes it so the rider is not going to be on an adventure. But turn four cold vault in the play, though, that's pretty powerful. And Hello there, Carbold. Have... Yep, and Isaac... there's an extra food. Don't have to sacrifice your goose or a land. Saying Isaac has his one of Citadel in hand as well. So he's uh, he's in the driver's seat for sure. Yeah, looking, having looked at uh, William's deck, he literally has no way to get rid of Corvold at all. <laughs> Outside of Priest. I love it. Basically. It's just like this so single-minded once there's a second creature on the board if you can't claim it well that means you just got to spend two turns doing priest activations yeah hmm so interesting yeah he's gonna All right, he plays the passage right away so he's gonna resolve his double before Sacking the passage and before claiming the devil, trying to get, I think, the oven used up here. Yeah, definitely, you gotta go after the goat for sure. Don't wanna, don't want the kitty to get a free activation without having to use the oven. <laughs> no free snacks here. <laughs> go and face. Oop. Worked out last time. There's the claim here. So we're going to see this. We might. Mm, no, yeah, we're definitely going to see the double get sacked here, but I guess he just goes face. Ping the cat, is, ping the face. This is Isaac's trigger here. I feel like I. Mm, I feel like I would just go face there. Because uh, I don't think I want to give. And this uh, doesn't stop any damage since uh, there's, the cat can't block this turn. It yeah. just puts, the, puts that cat in the graveyard. And Corval just crunched on the goose. Feels bad. But, yep. Here we go. He's got the six land for the Citadel. So, looking pretty good for Isaac in this game. Yeah, whoever gets Corval first definitely... Definitely gets a oh. massive advantage here. And we're just seeing a concession. No way to deal with Corvold, especially not in one turn. Yeah, if you see sideboarding. It. Yeah, if you notice up top, William just snaps submitted. Like I say, he, does, he just really doesn't have much outside of the <laughs> one extra like, Corvold. like, I love what I have. It's already perfect. I do not need to change my deck. Fight me, Isaac. 
Come at me, bro. <laughs> My cats and ovens are better than your cats and ovens. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Looks like Isaac is gonna opt to cut the Citadel on the draw and just pretty much have Corval be his main main engine of victory here. Chugga, 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 chugga. <laughs> Yeah, I do I think... love this a crow in war though. I would love to see a crow in war stealing a corval. That's like yeah. my dream for the next match. Yeah, I mean that's like that's like the play pattern that he's hoping for. So that you know he like that's like the one way to to break serve basically. It's just like even even if William gets the corval first, even, you know since he's on the play, he can still have a way to get back into it with the crow in war. So that's definitely a, a sweet a sweet one for this matchup. Let's see uh, if yeah. It looks like this is what he's gonna settle on. Yeah, he looks pretty. Timer almost burning out. Get two uh, minutes for it. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder if there's any consideration of going up to four strider and cutting a Vraska. I know it deals with like the devils and such, but I mean, you, you kind of want to have a board as well, so you don't just get completely ran over. Oh, he's gonna go back to the citadel. Okay, he decided. One citadel it in. All right. I mean, it is a very high impact card. That it's also a spicy card. Yeah, generally, once you slam it, you win the game. But let's or see, you get uh, a land, and then you just sit there and you think, oh, okay. Let's see if it pays off here. William, yeah, William keeps in all his priests because he had no, he has no other way of dealing with Corvold. Mm -hmm. Being on, being on the play, priest is definitely going to be better there. Yeah, that's a very nice hand for uh for William Craddock up there. You've got the priest into Mayhem Devil or Woe Strider if you want to activate the priest. Yeah. Pretty yeah, nice awkward, stuff. awkward hand from. Uh, Awkward hand yeah. from Isaac there. He, you Look, know, it, it looks great, right? Isaac's got a turn right? for Corvold hands. You know, I'm saying his his last hand looked, you know, he had lands and spells, but they were just all threes and up, so it was just super slow. I think he's probably afraid of like William being able to go like goose into like trail or into devil and just kind of run him over. William being on the play here is going to mean that there's going to be a stampede happening. Can go for this uh, turn to woe strider. I like it here. It protects you the most against this priest. Mm-hmm. Like, even, even with I mean, the... You're not going to want to just throw down a strider and immediately try and force them to drop a creature since they just sacrifice a zero-one goat. Yeah. Definitely a bad exchange here if he does that. So the trail means that, like, the goose gets to do its thing right away. I don't no, think he wants to use around. No, the trail it'll the trail brings the feedback. back. Oh right, yes, it'll be able to use the but food yeah. that the trail generates. I don't think uh Yeah, I was gonna say it. I don't think uh, he wants to activate it just yet because he wants that mana for next turn. Also I wonder if there was any consideration for like passaging this turn rather than play, putting Stumpy Ground to play tab just to play around the devil. I mean, we know we know William has it, but that's definitely like playing passage. Like playing passage is actually not an easy it's, thing to do in this. It's not era. like Isaac can be saving it for his own devil here because he has he doesn't have a mayhem devil. Yeah, he doesn't have black mana also until he plays the fabled passage. Yeah, yeah, tough spot here. He stolen Woe Strider, Woe Strider. Not able to sacrifice itself. Yeah, this devil is just going to wreck Isaac's entire board now. Oh, he sacks the strider and the goat. To oh, I love the... this, by the way. Yeah. There's some hovering going on here to make sure that the right woe strider yeah. gets sacrificed. I've had yeah. to do that before. If you right click on the card, it will show you who the owner is in a little template. Just a little pro tip for anybody out there. He goes 1 1 here with the devils. Yeah. That way, the Goose gets you sacked. gotta sacrifice that goose. You may as well use it to get a card. Yeah, he's gotta. I guess. I think in this spot, he's kind of just hoping to draw. Like, I guess now he would kind of need an oven. Oh, but look at his mana is so awkward here. He can't even devil. No, he, he can't. 
Oh, yeah. well, actually, there's the black mana, but then you don't get the fabled passage. Yeah. Not that there's anything to ping. Yeah, there's yeah. only blue mana. Now we're now we're in the gender dome. But. Yeah, I think Isaac is. Uh... Oh no. Oh, and there's Corvold. Wow. That... Corvold actually kind of makes it appealing to sacrifice your woe strider and mayhem devil here. So the priest. <laughs> But you get the card draw. You <laughs> take out their mayhem devil. Goes for but the they would land. also be able to take out the priest in response to it. Yeah. Hmm. I think you just shoot priest here, maybe? Yeah, I think there's just no... No good options here for, for Isaac. Ops for the devil... I think we're going to see a swing on in. Yeah, he'll be forced to block. Can you just pass the turn here? Maybe. I guess you can, you can attack with at least the probably the strider. strider. Yeah. yeah, I think the woe strider is the, the best thing to swing in with here. That way you're guaranteed that your mayhem devil will stick around. Yeah, the thing is, though, I guess, well, I guess the priest protects from a Crone War as well as Strider, but if, if he has if he has to use priest and sack, like, his whole board, that's not, that's definitely not ideal in this spot. But he opts to attack. Isaac has no choice but to block. He's just he has to board. block because otherwise it would be lethal. Yeah. Ah, here we go. All right. Yeah. Has to block there. To let that damage resolve. He could just go for the... What? No, 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 no. He would kill the Wolf Strider if he does that. Ooh, there's the Akron War. Hmm. Probably have to sacrifice in response to that. Hmm. Yeah, Unless I mean, if he does go... for Corvold. Yeah, like, Corvold he... would not save them. They would die if they played Corvold. Yeah, he would Actually, have... they die either way. There's nothing in hand that gets... That gets Isaac out of this. Yeah, because if, if you try to Corvold's take the Corval, yeah, if you try to take the Corval, then William can just sack both and put mm -hmm. and put him to one, and then the priest is lethal, and then you take the priest. Yeah. You have, you have Remember, nothing. You have nothing to sack the, to it. The priest can attack too. People it's like true. to forget this. Everybody's like, "Oh man, my my one." My one, two. Oh, wait, they didn't go for the priest activation. They're going to go for the Woe Strider and priest attack. Yeah, he's got another... And that was in another, case of a cat blocker. Yeah, he's got another Strider in, in hand as well. So even if, like, even if Isaac had, like, a follow-up play or something, he would still be able to play a Strider and make, make Isaac sack his only creature and kill him. Wow. Well, here we go. We're going to see uh, William Craddock is going to be the lone food player remaining in this tournament now. William Craddock has snacked his way to victory using Jund Food. Congratulations. Moving on to the semifinals. Way to go. Good stuff there for sure. And uh, I'm you know, a little sad though that I didn't get yeah. to see the priest attack face because I wanted her to do that, but I'm still... <laughs> Very happy to see that game. It was some good back and forth. Pings on pings on pings. Mayhem Devil doing work. Yeah. Absolutely amazing stuff. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, great run to Isaac as well. He, you know, was destroying this tournament the whole weekend and put up a great finish here. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be William Craddock moving on to the semis. And I believe he will face Dennis in the, in the top four, if I'm not mistaken. All right, and I think we're going to pop on over to the news desk we after go. we take a peek at this. So here we see the ooh, the two semifinals matches. You've got Jun Sacrifice versus Bant Ramp and Timur Reclamation and Salt High Ramp, all with incredible pilots going into the top four. So we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll head over to the news desk, and then we'll hit those semifinals. Hello and welcome to The Bold, the fastest way to get to know the most interesting people in magic. And right now I'm joined by Vince, aka Pleasant Kenobi. Vince, where can we find you on the internet? 
Uh, you can find me primarily at youtube.com forward slash Pleasant Kenobi, where all my main magic happens with videos and such. But I also stream quite regularly on twitch.tv forward slash Pleasant Kenobi. And I'm also very active on Twitter, normally shouting about politics mainly, uh, uh, which is twi- uh, Pleasant Kenobi on Twitter as well. Easy. All right, we'll get straight into some questions. What is your favorite magic format? Uh, Legacy. I mean, it's a tie between Legacy and Commander because Commander tends not to get shafted by new releases, but normally Legacy. <laughs> Uh, what is the best color of mana? Oh, well, I, I, I am personally attuned to white, white weenie, death and taxes and that sort of thing. But let's be real, green is the best color. It gets all the best new toys. It gets to do everything <laughs> in magic. It does everything every other color does, but like better most of the time. So I'm going to have to answer with green. What's your all-time favorite deck? My all-time favorite deck is uh, varied iterations of Legacy, Death and Taxes. So that's your Richardon Ports and your Wastelands, your Aether Vials, your Thales and your Flicker Wisps, and of course Stoneforge Mystic to go get your uh, Toolbox answer. The deck's just a lot of fun being not only a deck that can be aggressive, but also take on the controlling role. It rewards you for format knowledge. It's like solving a puzzle. Uh, Yeah, it's definitely Legacy, Death and Taxes. Uh, Yes or no, Pineapple on Pizza? Yes. Marvel or DC? Marvel movies, DC Comics. Mario or Sonic? Mario's. (laughs) Obviously. (laughs) But Sonic go fast. (laughs) Sonic go fast is pretty much all he can do, yeah. (laughs) What's the last movie you saw? Uh, Unfortunately, uh, Brightburn. What is the best breakfast food? Oh, what is the best breakfast food? I think just a full-on like English uh, fry-up. So sausages, bacon, hash browns, toast or fried bread, all those things with some, with some HP brown sauce. If you don't have any HP brown sauce with it, you're not doing it right. And one last question. Uh, what is a song that makes you turn off the radio? Oh, what is a song that makes me turn off the radio? Uh, anything by Disturbed. <laughs> all right. Thanks very much, Vince. Once again, where can we find you online? Uh, check me out on YouTube.com forward slash Pleasant Kenobi or Twitch.tv forward slash Pleasant Kenobi. Awesome. Hello everyone, Ashlyn Rose here with Christian Calcano, and uh, we are going to be taking a look at our semi-final brackets and some of the decks for the next match we'll be watching. So in the semi-finals, we have William Craddock, Dennis Chan, Ray Hirayama, and Yuri Babich. Uh, we're going to be watching Ray and Yuri's match. So it's going to be Teamer Reclamation against Saltai Ramp. Uh, I guess, which deck, which deck do we want to dive into first? You want to take a look at Saltai Ramp? Yeah, let's go. Let's go with Sultai. It's the, the more fun deck of the two, at least. <laughs> We've seen Team Iraq. We know it's in it. So we got uh, Uri Babich here with his Sultai deck. Um, he's got a lot of interesting choices. Looking at his list, I feel like he definitely came here to beat up on Bant and Aggro decks. He's got the four Crisis and he's got all the removal spells. So, so what I'm hearing here is it's not built for Team or Re- for Team Iraq. Yeah, it's not, although, you know, he, he has the Thought Erasures, and the Tyrant Scorns are not dead because they also killed the Shark Token, so at least has that. Um, and yeah, he's got five discard spells total, so he still has some action against against Teamer, but I feel like, you know, I feel like the, the Raps are not as good here, mm-hmm. and like casualties, while... He does have, like, the opportunity to, like, blow up a wreck and a land or something. I just feel like that's not much of a winning line. And also, Ray, once we get over to his deck, you'll see he has four Aether Gusts, which is, you know, pretty solid against Uro and Casualties and the Nissa, of course. So, 
What about sideboard? Is what what are we looking at for that? So sideboard, he's got a couple of extra discard spells as well as the dot distortions. I think that he's probably just gonna run all of them in. Mm -hmm. um, luckily for for Babbage, Ray doesn't have like all these night pack ambushers that we're used to seeing in the sideboard of these teamer decks. He only has one, so this dot distortion is actually gonna be pretty powerful. While we've seen like we've seen like some teamer decks try to mitigate its effect with like Narset's reversal or mm -hmm. just like playing borrowers and um, um, night pack ambushers so that it doesn't affect them as much. But uh, other than that, it looks like it looks like uh, Yuri, even though like his deck wasn't super well set up for teamer, um, at least uh, the list he's going up against is probably going to be somewhat of a good matchup for him. I feel. So let's check out Ray now, right? Let's see. So this is Ray's teamer build here. Um, yeah, like I was saying, the four uh, like the four gusts are it's awkward because like Ray like Ray doesn't have sorry uh uh Babish doesn't have like the Cavalier of Thorns, so like the gusts uh -huh. aren't that great. But it, you know he still has some solid targets in like Tamio, Nissa. Oro and the casualties. Casualties being probably like the one that he's going to be the happiest to be bouncing off because he's not going to want to let that resolve on like a reclamation and set him back a turn. Uh, having played both of these decks, I played the Soul Tide deck last week and then I played Teamer this week. I just feel like the matchup, at least uh, at least post board, is going to be mostly about like trying to you know ramp as fast as possible. Like they're both trying to Uro and grow spiral the other. So who can out ramp? Pretty much, uh, because Ray is going to try to ramp and try to get a, a fast explosion as as fast as possible, uh, and then uh, Babbage is going to want to try to fire off a uh, distortion as fast as possible. But I feel like uh, the key the key for Teamer to beat Sultai is to try to resolve Uro like before the distortion hits, because uh -huh. the majority of the cards that are going to be in the graveyard to like feel the Uro are going to be all spells, and so the distortion, if you can get distortion resolved before the Uro hits, then it's going to be really hard for Uro to, you know, find his way uh, onto the battlefield. So I think that's that should be Ray's plan in this, uh, in this matchup. Okay, well, great. Well, I guess, you know, why wait any longer? We'll go ahead and head on over to watch Ray and Yuri and see which one of them will be one step closer to $8,000 and an invite to the Player Tours Finals next month. How do you do, fellow gamers? Let's watch some magic happen. Well, let's see, we're watching Ray side of things here. Yep, we're going to be watching Ray on Timurek versus Bimich on Sultai Ramp. Mm, fair Two fight decks there. with a lot of growth spirals. Yes, yeah, spiral is definitely uh, the dominant card in standard nowadays. Let's see Ray. Often not shock on the dispute here. So Babbage is free to erasure slash spiral here. Interesting there. Not that people are playing Thought Erasure again. I think I got to start bringing my uh, really, really good Nullhide Ferex back into Ooh. the back into the game plan. Yeah, off those burglar rats. Turn two, turn two Ferox. <laughs> but yeah, I've gotten some people with that too. Nice. Even with Thought Erasure, because they don't read the card, they're just like, uh, "Oh man, she's gonna be oh. able to play that next turn." I oh, guess no. I should stop her from playing that four mana six six. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Rip. But yeah, we got so uh, Babbage bricked on on Lance for a couple of turns, but he finally finds one off a of spiral here. But uh, if you're Ray, you're pretty happy with how this game is going because the mana advantage is a big deal, as I stated earlier. So he's uh, doing pretty well there, and now. And now with this Uro, he's guaranteed to be able to slam this Reclamation down. Oh, and missing land on Uro. Babbage definitely not catching up in ramp. Yeah, and um, another thing another thing I didn't point out earlier, but 
Uh, Babbage is relying mostly on just discard spells to disrupt his team or opponent. So, like his his opponents get to like Ray gets to just jam reclamation all the time. Yeah, we even saw a growth spiral into reclamation. There's so much mana available here. Yeah, and he's got the castle as well, and he's got the typhoon. So he's got the dispute castle that. This is nope. just going great for Ray. Yeah, definitely in a good spot. I think if I'm Ray, honestly, I think I... Be, with the fact that... Okay, it definitely depends what happens on this turn. But I could see Ray going for a Typhoon here. Like a Hardcast one. Not oh, I would one. love to see Hardcast Typhoon right here. I say I say that because he's got the wreck in his hand. Oh, no, nope, never mind. We got a Remorse, which probably is going to have to get countered here. I think it's better to counter the remorse than risk losing something as valuable as your second wilderness reclamation. Yeah, I think yeah, because um, yeah, um, Babbage has like said, Babbage has no counters, so there's no there's no worry on disputes here. Oh, he's off for the cycle instead. Interesting. Um, yeah, like Babbage has no no typhoons either. Oh, we're actually just going to see a shark get. Shark get generated. He goes for the shark cycle. Feels Uro as well, which is nice. These disputes are actually pretty pretty huge. I think we're probably going to see one of them get taken away. Or it's just a wreck. He goes for the wreck. Okay. There goes the, the reclamation. The That's second... two disputes, though, that yeah. uh, Ray is going to have available, but they're both known, which lets Babbage try to play around them, though it might not be possible. Um, seeing the consideration for an upkeep scry here. Ooh. I'm glad you didn't do it. I think, yeah, I think... Hard yeah, I think, cash, shark typhoon. Hard I think cash, it's coming. shark typhoon. I, I want to see some sharks. Yeah. I want to see the board filled with sharks. Yeah, you get to you get to slam typhoon here. You know they don't have dispute. You get you have you have double dispute of your own to counter whatever he plays. No, he goes for the cycle. He goes for the Boring. scry. Just because think, it's the better play doesn't make it, yeah. you know, a fun play. Could have also, uh, as an alternate play there, used all that mana to just make a really, 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 really big second shark. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if it's the right play, honestly. But I guess, like, the plan here is... I guess the plan is just, like, he's just trying to find explosion as fast as possible. Yeah, I feel like I feel like I would have liked to see this typhoon in play. I would have at least liked to see what would it have been a one two. There's just no way to get punished. Looking looking at a, a there could have been list. a ten ten shark on this yeah. battlefield. Yeah, it could have, it could have two three threes. Yeah, I think it would have been nice because he would have been able to to have typhoon in play, have double dispute, have the option to scry as well. But now he's just yeah cycling this for a 3-3 shark and then maybe and then holding up the dispute for like only a potential blue spell here you see the think eraser hit in face I think though now with the typhoon and the dispute he's going to be able to get the Uro back next turn so he's still in a very good spot there's no doubt about it Mm. Oh, there's an there's an Arsa, which is uh, there to uh, take one for the team. It seems no, no, and there's Narsa being allowed to resolve. I do not like that. Yeah, um, this deck relies on card draw. That's what it does. Yeah, Ray. Ray's just you know he's happy to just let it resolve and just kill kill it, kill it with the power. typhoon, and that way he can protect his reclamation from the casualties with the dispute up. Yeah, Ray's definitely in the driver's seat yeah, here. Being able to dispute a casualties is very important since that is the card that just it's the anti value. It will take out your land, your enchantment, and whatever biggest, scariest creature you have, which in this case is probably Uro. Yeah, I mean, getting rid of the wreck, the Uro, and the castle would be pretty, pretty sick, but he's not going to have that option next turn. We're probably going to see a scry here. Hmm. 
Mm. And yeah, I mean, as you see, like, Irish, um, Uri missing these land drops has been pretty brutal for him because Ray has been able to just kind of do whatever he wants here. <laughs> Ray has been plan. able to throw a 4 4 and a 3 3 shark <laughs> onto the battlefield, draw some cards, get an Uro, get the Uro back. <laughs> you know, perfectly fine. Definitely not terrifying things if you're Babbage. I don't believe there are any uh, thought distortions in that main deck. No, none in the main. So, it, I mean, game one is definitely going to be worse. But, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty. Um, yeah, it's crazy that like there's no, there's just no, just not even one dispute or anything. Just like Ray just knows he gets to just kind of play however he wants, even post board as well. Like, Ray's just going to be jamming the whole time. He doesn't have to play around anything, basically. <laughs> oh, and we just got access to uh, Babbage's hand in the uh, little overlay here, so we can see it a little bit more easily. It's going to be very helpful. And now this Android Crisis is a mighty, mighty blocker. It is a mighty but blocker. But if you, if you are Ray, do you want to be aggressive? Just take that out. And smash face because there's a there's a decent chance with a couple of scries that you could manage to get lethal next turn. Yeah, he's just gonna go with the gust here. Ooh, I love the gust here. Yeah, you don't like it's a pretty big tempo swing. Like you know, normally gusting a crisis is is not what you want to be doing, but when you're a, a, this far ahead on board, you're definitely happy to do it in this spot. There's an opt for excellent filtering. I just want to swing in first. You've got the Uro who's also going to draw some cards. Yeah, we see a big attack here. Let's see if Have we find us. see if we find uh, an explosion and things yeah, in grand fashion. An explosion would be a beautiful way to end this game. So we're gonna see a scry first. That's a oh, negate. 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 Actually, negate is pretty nice to have. Yeah, that's uh, that's gonna do it as well. When your opponent is uh, on that casualties game plan and you know about it, and they know about your dispute, so they're just like, "Oh, I'll just wait until I have enough mana to pay for it. I'll wait until I have my own dispute." Doesn't matter. Nope. Get to be so cash. So we're gonna see some scry action here. Well, wow. there's it's, so if both those negates were bottom, there would have been lethal that turn. <laughs> but hindsight true, true. is twenty twenty. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's much he can do. Not even the, the extension event isn't enough because we have odd and even here. And both, even through the Uro, yeah, both are lethal. Uro goes into the graveyard. Yeah, this dispute Either is way. great here. This locks things that's, up. That's only three life and a card drawn. Oh no, it doesn't go into the graveyard. That was uh, that was escaped. Doesn't matter. Sharks yes. are too strong. An too explosion strong. would have been like quadruple lethal. All right, yeah, side so. for sideboarding. We're seeing Blast Zone come out. Uh, Bone Crusher Giant, Scorching Dragonfire commence, and uh, some of those Aether Gusts also being removed. It's actually interesting to see all of the Scorching Dragonfires removed. I find that they're very nice in any mirror match where you have Uros just to guarantee their removal. Yeah, it's just tough though because you, need, you only have like the window in which they cast the row to do it so that it, 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 it can make it tough. Otherwise, uh, you're two for one And it already still replaces itself with the card draw. He's bringing in these disdainful strokes here. But honestly, I'm not sure how much I'd like it. I know... I know that... I know that he's got, like, Nissa and Krasis that you can counter. But even still, like, you know, it doesn't counter Thought Distortion, so it's going to be a card that's going to be sitting in your hand for a while. It doesn't hit Narset, it doesn't hit Thought Erasure, like, none of the counters. I don't feel like Casualties of War is a card you want post-sideboard, so I'm not sure I'm, I'm about these uh, strokes here, but 
Let's see. Let's see what goes what goes down in game game two. I still think. Um, I think the big thing with disdainful stroke is that you can't disdainful stroke a disdainful stroke. That's that is also quite true. disdainful. <laughs> but yeah, I, I I don't know. This is. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I uh, I'm not sure about how this one's gonna play out, but let's uh, let's see let's see how it goes. There is duress. Mm. Yeah, because I know. Yeah, basically the targets are Nissa, Tamio, Krasis. That's it. Oh, did there's an early so. agonizing remorse. The hand is attacked. Got to get rid of that expansion explosion. That's the win con. Can't let Ray have that. Oh, and there's an Uro off the top. Yeah, Never Uro's, didn't have it, right? Yeah, Uro is huge, huge game here. Yeah, the cows, the he, he's missing, he's missing blue mana though, uh, areas. So, yeah, this, uh, these dot erasures and the spiral are very sad right now. But yeah, like when I, at what least is when blue I, blue mana. Blue mana was, is yeah. illegal. Island is the most powerful <laughs> card in the game. You remove it, and nothing happens. <laughs> Island is powerful. Agreed. <gasps> it's a blue source, but it comes in tapped. So nothing's happening this turn. Babbage just getting bodied. Yeah, Ray. Ray is pretty happy finding that land here. He's just trying to find as much mana as possible. Go out, start going off with the castle here. But yeah, this is like my issue with the disdainful here is that like it, it's just uh it plays very poorly into the dot distortion. Like I said, since he doesn't have many targets, it's just gonna sit in his hand for a while, and it's just gonna make his distortions better. When I think all you want to be doing is like trying to get all the cards out of your hand as fast as possible, and then playing an Uro from the yard so that distortion just doesn't have much of an effect on the game. But Eerie is pretty mana screwed here. It doesn't even go for the crisis. Huh. Didn't go for a thought erasure or a crisis. Just holding the mana. Is yeah. this a bluff of a counter spell, maybe? Um, no, 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 no counter bluffs. Uh, they know, uh, like, both players know their list, so. No. <laughs> but, um. Sorry, I'm, I'm laughing because. I just got to see Girl's File get disputed. And oh no, it's Blue Mana! The most yeah. powerful card. It's Island. Goes for the forest. Going for a shark? Gonna negate the Thought Erasure? Yeah. Right, gonna cycle out that shark. Let's see what ends up going in hand. Yeah, he's just trying. He, I guess, he's happy with, he's happy with getting discarded here because he gets to escape the Uro with like one of the two mana backups here. But now, hmm, well, I guess yeah. Next turn, depending on what Eerie does, hmm, like Eerie's hoping for a land here, I would imagine, so that he can at least crace this for four. We see we're in the surveilling phase here. And that Distor was a, yeah. whoa, a distortion going ah. to the graveyard. The distortion yeah. couldn't be cast, even though it would have completely emptied the hand and exiled things from the graveyard to prevent Uro from escaping. The Uro is going to escape here anyway. Before yeah. that boss distortion could go off, it, it was pretty well known that this would happen. So here it comes, and we're just seeing a nice, solid... Yeah, Can't with no, stuff. yeah, with no six land, unfortunately, Babbage had to get rid of the distortion here. Oh, but um, uh -huh. yeah, this Uro is just uh, gonna be ready to take over the game. Oh, there's the land, so it's definitely crisis time. I feel. Well, I guess yeah, because I mean, you know, you know, you know, you know that Ray has the the strokes here, so you you can't cast casualties. Unfortunately, your only hope is to like. Cast Crisis, you got a 15. 
then you like maybe draw the second distortion, then you cast that distortion. You're dealing with a resolved Uro. Yeah, I'm saying you go to one over two. Oh, no, wait, mm -hmm. no, it's, it's eight damage. Never mind. I think he's just. Uh, I think we're just uh, kind of seeing them go to the motions at this point. Yeah, a couple of lands there. Yeah, Uro's a pretty big game in this matchup. Definitely, you want to be the one with Uro here. Mm hmm. Growth Spiral being drawn, bringing uh, Babbage down to just a few life, seven life left. There's Nyssa. Nyssa, I, I mean, Nyssa. theoretically, Nyssa would be enough to, like... Is there enough to Nyssa and casualties this turn? There is, but, you know, knowing that he's got the, the disdainful here... Mm-hmm. Hmm, I wonder the only way to do it would be to use the Nissa mana, and if Nissa doesn't resolve, good yeah, luck. I don't think we're gonna see an expansion here. We might. I like the expansion here. Oh no, I we're gonna see an explosion. Key. Oh, we're yeah. seeing the yeah, seeing I the mean, that draw right? and damage, bringing Babbage down to three life. And yeah. making this thought erasure really have a smorgasbord of choices. You get to choose from three different cards now. What do you get rid of? The Disdainful Stroke, Growth Spiral, Opt? Yeah, and with the shock here, this shark is, uh, this baby shark is going to be able to close things out. <laughs> yeah. There it is. Wow, quick work. That is, quick work for yeah, Ray here. what a way to go into the finals. Fantastic work. And um, yeah, good run, good run for uh, for Babbage here. I mean, he was able to bring Sultai all the way to the top four. I know uh, Sultai gets a lot of, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of people make fun of Sultai in this format, but I think it's Why a sweet deck. Why would you make fun of Sultai? It's a this... great deck, kind of like Bant yeah. Ramp. It's just pure value. There's yeah. no there's no card in it that doesn't stand on its own. It's good stuff. Yeah, I, so I, I think... I'm a fan. <laughs> We're going to take a quick break before we move on to the other semifinals match. Hello and welcome to The Bolt, the fastest way to get to know the most interesting people in Magic. And right now I am joined by content creator Spice 8 Rack. Hello, Spice 8 Rack. How are you? Hello, I'm doing absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much. I'm having a grand old time and I'm feeling good. Are you ready to answer some questions? I am absolutely ready to answer some questions, yes. All right, what is your favorite magic format? Uh, Commander. Yeah. What's your favorite commander to play? Uh, Noyandar, Royal Shaper, Royal Mage. That guy, the terrible, terrible Azorius Commander. What's your least favorite card to play against? Uh, it was Agent of Treachery, but now that's gone, I guess it's Nyssa World Waker? What is the best tribe in Magic? Oh, Goblins. What's the last movie you saw? Oh, uh, I watched the movie Snowpiercer, actually. Yeah. That's a good one. What'd you think of it? Oh, I loved it. I've been watching the TV show, and boy, they do not understand the source material. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what are you reading right now? I'm actually reading uh, The Government of No One by Ruth Kinner. Uh, last time we did this, uh, I hadn't gone through it all. Now I have, and it's bookmarked and stuff. I'm reading it for a video. What is your favorite breakfast food? Uh, oh, I love a bit of porridge. Ooh, a bit of porridge and jam. Love that for me. What's a song that makes you turn off the radio? Uh, oh, anything by Taylor Swift. And uh, one last question for you. Uh, yes. Can you name a movie that made you cry? Iron Giant. Absolutely Iron Giant. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. Where can we find you online? You can find me online at YouTube at Spice 8 Rack. You can find me on Twitch at Spice 8 Rack. And you can find me on Twitter at Spice 8 Rack. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs>
everyone, Ashlyn Rose here with Amy, aka Amazonian, and we are going to be looking at the semifinal brackets, but before we do that, just kidding, we're going to throw it up, but I am going to take a moment here to talk a little bit about Rei Hirayama, who has made it into the finals um, with our the team reclamation, so I know we've been talking about how much of a different turnout we've had at this event, but there is a Demer Rec deck and it is in the finals. Will it take it all the way? Who knows? But Rei Hiryama uh, is known for placing second place at the finals in Japan, which is one of the longest continuously running magic events known. It's been going on since 1995. And, I, you know... We were I, we were very young children I, at I was that about point to say, in time. I don't remember 1995. I was quite quite the young one then. So that's incredible. But a little bit about Ray Hiriyama. Let's go ahead and look at William Craddock and Dennis Chan and what they're playing. Which deck do we want to see first? Ooh, let's hop right into Dennis Chan's Bant Ramp deck. So this Bant Ramp deck is sheer good stuff. All of these cards are fantastic on their own, and together they're even better. You've got the traditional ramp package with Uros and Growth Spirals. Some, I would say, nice graveyard feeding in the form mm -hmm. of Tamiyo. Gotta have the four Teferis, though, because, well, what's better than making it so your opponent can't play counter spells? Uh, really playing really your board wipes at instant speed, too. <laughs> That's also pretty awesome. You got those two Shatters in the main board, three Nisses. Both to increase your mana for gigantic hydroid crisis and you know just an extra three three on the ground every turn. Because why it's not? A very strong deck. Yep, it's been it's been solid so far. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Williams. And William Traddock running one of the two Jund sacrifice decks that made it to the top eight. This one make it into the semifinals. You got two Corvolds in the main board. You've got all those free slow striders. Some flame the first ones. <laughs> and then the spicy addition to this deck, three Bolus's Citadels. So Bolus's Citadel is this big legendary artifact that you don't see that often because yeah. it's hard to land. It's got three black and it's casting cost. But what does it do? It lets you play spells right off the top of your deck, including... Lands. It lets you play a land if it's on top of your deck, which is Ooh. just a very nice ability. A lot of things will uh, only let you cast rather than play off the top of your deck. Nope, this one lets you throw down all the cards you want, and all you have to pay is your life. Um, you pay in life total instead of the CMC, and if you manage to get 10 permanents out onto the battlefield, you can always tap and sacrifice them to deal 10 damage to your opponent. Yeah, just just a nice little tin damage, and with Mayhem Devil, you know, might as well yeah, double it. Deal. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't matter if you are at one life, because you can take out your opponent in one turn with a Mayhem Devil down and a big bolus of Citadel Sacrifice. Great. Okay, well, it sounds like we're ready to head into the match, so let's go ahead and see who will be victorious in moving on to the finals to face off against Rei Hiriyama. Let's see it. I hear an ocean of sound coming from somebody. <laughs> there we go. Let's hop in. We are going to be watching over the shoulder of Dennis Chan with the Bant Ramp deck, but we'll still have access to Craddock's hand. You can see that in the little top window there. And both of these hands are, well, Craddock's looks a lot better. I feel like a hand where, sure, you've got scries in the form of temples is okay. This looks Rough. Oh, but it's yeah. Deep. Yeah, Dennis's hand is very slow. I definitely have to say, I think uh, at least when I was testing John, like in preparation for the first event, I felt that the matchup was definitely in John's favor. Like once, like uh, like, sorry, the band deck just doesn't really pressure the John deck at all. So normally, once you resolve the Citadel. At some point later in the game, you're going to have a ton of life total, a high life total, and you're just going to be able to run away with it. 
And this, yeah, I mean, Dennis's hand is pretty slow. You see him keeping the bar, or even though it's not great in this matchup, but I guess he just feels like he needs to be able to slow down William here. And slowing down is just what the borrower does. Great at disrupting mana. If you're using mana dorks like the Gilded Goose, throwing priested forgotten gods back into hand or mayhem devil before they get any value and even messing up yeah. sacrifice plays by just dunking whatever's being like fed. If you're feeding into a four world, you get it up to be like an eight, eight, and then you throw it back into their hand right as they attack. It's like, all right, you're drawing cards, but you've set yourself back a little bit. Yeah, definitely a uh, good at tempo in there. And we see, we see the bar bounce the food to kind of slow down William's mana <laughs> development here. This but... poor goose. This is a very hungry goose, but it's okay. Cause the egg is back in the form of trail of crumbs food. We could see uh, the Gilded Goose go for the draw here using that food. Or we could see the mana get used to bring the cat out. Um, there's a lot of choices here. I kind of like bringing the cat out because of the Priest and Mayhem Devil being in hand. Um, I think the problem with that, though, would be that it would face uh, an opposing Teferi. That's true. You gotta deal with those bounces. Slow him down, but it go, does go with the cat. Yeah. Hmm. There's a kitty. <laughs> Hello there, Cauldron Familiar. Nice to see you. Hope you don't get put in any ovens anytime soon. Oh, and there's Teferi. And by Teferi. Yeah, Teferi's gonna bite the dust here. Let's see, does he have... Yeah, he does have main deck Shatter. So, potentially he'd yep, be looking are for that. At least two Shatters main deck? Yeah, two Shatters here. So I think William's going to want to be careful here. I could just end up seeing... All right, we're going to see the priest. So there, here's the shatter test. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely... Uh, this slow start will be very telling, especially once there's no shatter here. I think William will then be able to gather a good idea of... Dennis's hand here. And this crisis for one, or for two, I guess, sorry. This crisis for it's one card. It's not the smallest crisis it could be. It's the second no. smallest. Yeah, definitely the second smallest. But, um, yeah, this is definitely uh, music to William's ears for sure. As you know, he kind of knows that the coast is clear to go off here. Goes with the trail. I think we might end up seeing a priest sack here. Priest clearing the way, munching on a goose and a cat to throw yes. the Hydra Crisis into the graveyard, draw some cards. Definitely a possibility. You could see the. You could maybe play the second priest and sack that in the cat. And then with that's, the. That's doable. The, could also get yeah. down the Mayhem Devil. But I feel like making use of the Trail of Crumbs is, is nice here. You've got two Trail of Crumbs down. You've got this goose able to, you know, keep producing more food for those Trail of Crumbs to get more cards mm -hmm. in hand. Card advantage against a Bant isn't a game you want to try to play, though. Bant is the king of card advantage. Yeah, also, I feel like if if um, if Dennis had a Shatter, he would have used it that turn rather than play a Crisis. So knowing that, I feel like you want to try to pressure... Uh, Dennis's life total if you can. Looks like he's just gonna opt for bringing back the goose, uh, sorry, the, the familiar, and then getting two triggers off the trail here. Which so is pretty reasonable value. as well. It's definitely Value Town. Take me to Value Town. And I see the shot coming in. It's time for Nissa. Nissa's land is definitely going to be victim of sacrifice. But it's still pretty nice to, to animate. Actually, there's probably some consideration that should be given to not animating a land here. Mm -hmm. Now that I think about it, because there's two priests down. You're not getting rid of them. You can't even bluff a way to get rid of them because there's no breeding pools in this in play right now. Nope. Cat comes back. You're going <laughs> to lose, lose that temple. Yeah, losing, that, losing the land is actually pretty rough. Uh, even though he still has one, two, three, four, five, six mana left over. 
But yeah. Um, yeah, awful lot of forests. Two of them. Big turn there. I think uh, the devil's about to come down and create its usual mayhem. Here it comes. Mm. Oh, wait, yeah. maybe not. Oh, Let's I think we here. might just be seeing the retap. Trying to keep the green mana at the ready for the goose. Perhaps. Yeah, I think he, yeah, he, I think he wants to. Oh. I guess no, I guess he's gonna nope. he's gonna fetch for he's gonna fetch for forest and cast the goose that way. And I think we're gonna see this. Temple. I think we're gonna see the second mayhem devil come down too. Oh, I would have actually loved to see the priest activation hit right there. Use the mana from the priest. Bring down the mayhem devil. Party hard with the goose. Walk your <laughs> way to victory. Yeah, I think the only thing with that, though, is maybe he doesn't want to sacrifice the priest. And he have the priest here. He's going to sack mm -hmm. this goose. Sack the goose, kill the plant, kill the uh, temple, bring Nissa down to... Um, bring it down to... Oh, no, just go in face, eh? Bring it down to party town. Yep. <laughs> Ignore Nissa because you're just going to keep making them sacrifice their lands. It might be lethal off the second Mayhem Devil because you have the cat come back. You sacrifice the food. You get two pings off that. You use the other. Yep, that's lethal. You use the other priest and suddenly the game is okay. Because you're draining your opponent for two and you're pinging them for four. Yeah, that, that'll do it there. And game one goes to William. William Craddock with a clean, fast victory against a hand that was mostly lands at the start of the game. Dennis Chan hopefully able to bring it back in game two. Taking out those borrowers, because everything just gets sacrificed in response. Taking out yeah. those shark typhoons, because they are exquisitely vulnerable to blame the first foreigns. Yeah, bar, yeah bar is not great. Uh, you know, of course, that you can sack a uh, response to you can sack whatever they target so that the bar just goes away with the oven and the low striders and bouncing like the trails and the ovens that are not where you want to be. Um, let me see when your opponent has entered the battlefield as just half their cards, Teferi is just out of here. Also, that deck really runs on sorcery speed, so the other part of Teferi. The uh, ability to kind of turn off instance doesn't really do that much against Craddock stack. Yeah, agreed here. It's already and, doing everything as a sorcery. And William, it's got the Reggies. Not sure if those are going to come in, but probably just the duresses for the Fable most part. Maybe aggro, the I would not and mind the, soul, the soul guides to like help deal with the uh, Uros here. All right. Hmm. I think you probably want to end up shipping that one. We already have. Yeah, I already have four mana. You have Uro. It would be beautiful. A top decked growth spiral, maybe. Growth spiral would be ideal. Ooh. Or you could put this cat into intervention. a basket. Yeah. Well. You see, Dennis has two interventions in his deck, so he's pretty happy to see this one. Although intervention no, not... takes out those ovens, takes out the citadel that I see in hand too. Yeah, Here comes the those... priest. So the priest, an even better target for that glass casket. There's no way to uh, force it to be sacrificed here. Ooh, I guess Oro's going to come out. We're going to go for the rant play, since with no creatures in play, the priest is not that scary. Yeah. And all right, well, wow, clutch draw there gets to put mm -hmm. the trium into play. So now, if uh, if William curves out into a three drop here, he can ECD it. But that's definitely that's well, definitely that's good nice. news for Dennis here. Definitely happy to see a tap land and then just attack for two. So this yep. casket gets to shut down the priest, taking out that priest before Dream Trawler comes down in a turn or two. Yep. Yeah, we could end up seeing... Yeah, we're probably going to end up seeing the Trawler next turn here. Assuming he can find the six wow, land. This, wow, these draws for Craddock are rough. What, what could be fun here is if Bolus's Citadel comes down, 
and Crack's able to just go crazy off of it. Since all the lands have already been drawn, maybe he won't hit any lands. Yeah, especially um, if if Dennis doesn't have any mana up, then he can resolve the Citadel and try and get as much value as possible. That way he can get intervention to break it up. But the six, he did find the six land, Dennis did, mm-hmm. but it was unfortunately a temple, so no, no trawler this turn. Only get to draw one off this 3-3 three, three Hydroid Crisis, but that's big enough to stop the cat from swinging in over and over. And here comes Woe Strider, a good top deck, something that's fairly useful. So this is a little a bit of an awkward spot here. Um, I wonder what do you do with your Dennis? You could I like put- Nyssa and Trawler if there's enough mana for it. I'm trying to count out if there is enough here. Because there are... There are five forests. Yeah, there is enough yep, mana. Yep, there is enough. There is enough mana, but the problem with this line is that you open up yourself to to the Citadel here. And being on 19 life, and, and having a Strider, like, the game could just literally end on the spot here. So I think, yeah, oh, looks like he's going to go for the for the Trawler, though. Definitely. Maybe this is going for the Elspeth Conqueror's death, uh, taking out the Woe Strider. Oh, that is true. Uh, yep, it looks like it's, yeah. it is going for the uh, ECD here. Yeah, I guess he's hoping that he doesn't have the Citadel in hand here. And I guess even if he does, not having the Strider means that he can't go too crazy. But, you know, it's definitely possible to just run, run it off the top. Wow, no protection on the Nissa here. I This Citadel's coming down. And there it comes. William's going to see how far he can go here. No lands on the top. Oh, and yeah, it's that's land brutal. On top. That is. He had a absolute... little Rakdos land there, and Heliod's intervention just going to be able to cleanly remove that. There's even an extra one in hand, so you don't have to feel too bad about using one up. Uh, do you have to feel bad about Auto Tapper trying to tap your Temple of Plenty that's been animated, though? Um, <laughs> Dennis did catch Auto Tapper there. Shame on you, Auto Tapper. Yeah, I shame think on you. Auto Tapper tries to not tap the uh, <laughs> the forest, I believe. But yeah, yeah. it tries to uh, not tap more mana than necessary. Yeah, I think that's what it was trying to do there. You so. silly, you silly little thing. And Grax yeah. out of here. William, William picks it up here. Um, yep, and post board here. Let's see if Dennis wants to change anything being on the draw. I'm not sure. Probably not. This configuration looks I don't pretty think that solid. This very much. I like Gust on the draw. Yeah, this looks good for this looks good for Dennis. I think and I think we're gonna see probably more of the same from both of these guys. Alright, here we go. Yes, William is still in the tank over here. Yeah, I, I don't know how many duresses William wants. They're definitely worse on the play, I feel. Because you want to just be getting on the battlefield. Let's see. That's a pretty nice starting hand. Got early yeah, removal, uh, got a row for ramp, life gain, draw, ramp. Even more. Just keep ramping. Just ramp even more. Just nothing but ramp. And no no remorses in William's deck, so no fear of the Oro. Here comes no. the Honk Field the Goose landing on the battlefield. Craddock did have a uh, big mulligan there, so only four cards left in hand. Tamiyo but... is a big game here. Tamiyo stops all the priest shenanigans, so you're happy to mm-hmm. see that. Tamiyo does stop those Pesky discards and sacrifices, and the goose is going to jail. Attacking going the, to the man, fox box. Eh? Yeah, I guess with trail, got to look for land. Has, yeah, yeah, I was saying with the trail, it kind of makes the uh, the goose a, a bigger threat here. So he's, he goes for the for the casket rather than holding it up for like a strider or a devil Ooh. here. And here is a double trail of th- of uh, crumbs. Yeah, it's definitely a big time draw there. Okay, we're gonna see the Uro now. And Dennis is 
in a tough spot. Doesn't have much action. Ooh, Shatter. Ooh, Hello. but Shatter means that even if Craddock manages to set up a strong board, that board can be cleared. He goes for the pool over the trio, so potentially looking to cycle it. Or, I mean, if it's fine. There's enough catch, mana in hand. Yeah, if it's fine. I feel like to, holding it the cycle's fine. Yeah, I'm saying if the plan is to cast Tamio or Shatter, he can just reevaluate next turn if he wants to play the trio or not, so. Oh, I'd like to announce, by the way, that the sun has risen where I am. Um, Same. Mm -hmm. Praise the sun. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, digging for mana. Looks like William found it. So what's his line here? Probably wants to play Strider Start here. Get yeah. the Strider. No cards in the yard, so this strider's gonna go away for a while once this wrath hits, which I assume is now. And seeing it hover. We're hovering. Channeling the energy. And time to get two scries. Good scry action. Snap top on the oven there. Let's see if we see this trail here. Nope. Goes for the temple. Yeah, the oven here means that... Oh. Just wants to get on the battlefield. Ooh, and now the cat oven action. It's a big turn. It's active. But there's both a gust and an Elspeth Conqueror's death at the ready here. Hmm. Only two cards in the yard, so this Oro's a long ways. It is possible to Tamio bring back the Shatter and Gust this turn. Mm, you could, but then you but yeah, but then the Tamio would probably just she, die. She died to the ping and the cat. To the tokens, yeah. I mean you could main phase the gust on the devil. But yeah, maybe just E C D here is probably better. This I this like um it. This Wolf Strider is still a long ways from coming back. Hmm, decides to get the cat in the yard for the extra ping here, rather than sacking the devil. Okay, there's the Trium. Not what the doctor ordered for William, but he's going to get a big turn here of uh, going crazy with these trails. Hopefully draw something good off those. Probably looking for another mayhem here. Yep, or even... Cat back, pay two uh, mana. Corvold off the first trigger would be pretty nice, although... That's true. Could play Corvold off the first trigger. Corvold would get gusted, but of course... Ooh, Dennis has no way to know that. There it is. Not there yet. It is. Yeah, but there is Corvold. Corvold able to get another cat oven cycle or a cat food cycle yep. here too. Yeah, sacking the cat means uh, he'll get to sack the food again. Also has the option of sacking two foods. To... Mm -hmm. for more card draw. But we'll probably just see one here. Yeah, I like conserving the food because there's the two trails down. And that yeah. way you also get one for swinging in next turn. Yeah, and he's got a ton of mana as well, so. But, uh, yeah, this Gus is going to be big time here. Mm -hmm. Also, one thing to note is that the ECD tax is online, so there are no bullets of Citadels in, in the next turn here. <laughs> I think we're seeing Nissa come down and shake Gotta everything up. Be careful with that mana. Make sure that two forests are kept up on the battlefield. Oh, wow. I can miss There's enough Tabio mana for and Tamio Gus. and Gust. Yep. Yeah, He's that's pretty. That's a pretty big turn here for Dennis. Huge value. Let's see. I wonder if there's anything else in the yard. Yeah, going yeah. with the Gust first. Throw that Gust. Let them sacrifice their foods. Are they sacrificing two or just one? Just one. Just one. Oh, there's a Citadel, but again, can't cast it next turn. It's going to be... Just a little too costly. Animate a land. Get to swing in with it. And then Tammy. Oh, or just Tammy. 
Okay. Yeah, he guess. doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't want to have William get like a free trigger. Is basically mm-hmm. um, cat cat cycle yeah, there. Yeah, because then that way, like uh, William doesn't have to use the oven. He can just main face, just bring the cat back and get two triggers there. So heads up play there. Wow, just all lands in a spiral there. There's two very scary planeswalkers. You've got one that's making these creatures out of lands every turn. Uh, you've got the other one. Our dear friend Tamio, how I love her, mm-hmm. giving you graveyard filling, recursion as well, stopping sacrifice, and discard, though it's not too relevant here. So, even though. There's, he- a, there's the Corvold that got uh, put on top, drawing another Corvold. What is okay. the graveyard that can be brought back by the Elspeth Conquer step? There's I the think- Oro, I think. I think That's it's just the Uro, yeah. Because okay. oh. he, because uh, Dennis bricked on good. the Dennis bricked on the Tamiel there. Nothing wrong with getting an extra three life and a card drawn. We are seeing this Corvold go off though. This Corvold is getting huge this turn. Yeah, even though and yeah, even builds, it's a lot to contend with. Oh, and there's a Dream Trawler. Yeah, even though yeah, even though he couldn't cast a citadel, having the core ball was still huge. Gave him a big turn there. Sorry, I seen... I'm a little mad that 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 Aro did come in without a loyalty counter. <laughs> Why yeah, would agreed. you not? Why would you not give yeah, Aro the, the loyalty it deserves? <laughs> Dream Trawler mm. is smaller mm. than Corvold. Oro coming back gives you a chance of drawing removal. Let's see if we're going to see this ECD come back. I like that. I feel like being able to just recur to that, that's very clean. You're still able to protect your board. Could even bring back the Shatter, but then you do lose your land. Yeah. This goes for the ECD, which is going to get sacked and going to get another draw out of it. Nope, just exiles. Just really wants to get the cat in the yard here. Seeing some fear of putting that cat in the uh, in the graveyard too early. Hmm. Let's see. I guess we're gonna see. I guess yeah, these attacks are free, I believe. Yep. Mm-hmm. There's nothing to be lost from swinging into this. They yeah. get blocked. One of the cats gets thrown into the graveyard with the oven. Yeah, there's no there's no way for William to get any extra triggers out of this, so and he you see William there blocking both just because uh he wants to keep his life total as high as possible for the citadel. And now here's one of the scariest cards in standard, Dream Trawler. There was a brief period of time where it disappeared. But now it's back. Oh, here we go. Oh. It starts things off was with the time. Devil. Mayhem Devil. Devil. Trail. It's almost, there. he's almost there. We okay. got oh, And the cat can draw a card on the top if a land gets hit. Uh, using the trail and the food that's down. Think, yeah, that's enough. That's enough. With, with Is that 10? Food. Yeah, with the food triggers. Oh, that's 10 yeah. permanents. That's yeah. game. 10 permanents. Sack the familiar. Get some extra triggers out of the devil. And then just boom. Bullis is doing his thing. And um, going to painfully make a credit click every single one of these Mayhem Devil triggers. Click, 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 click. And then victory is assured. Yeah, that's a spiral. I love it. The world's saddest growth spiral. Oh, what a It's a growth spiral. Million triggers on the stack. Okay, spiral. Yep, this yeah that's what that's what this deck does. That bullets is citadel when you're on that high of a life total. It's just a uh, pretty pretty game ending there. Good okay. stuff, from William. William Craddock, moving on to the finals. What a fantastic game between Jun Sacrifice and Bant Ramp. Love to see it happen. Love to see the bullets citadel spicy spicy win right there. Yeah, definitely great stuff there by William, uh, and and also like great tournament for Dennis. 
yeah, I've been watching him play the last few rounds, and it looks like he's playing very well. And he, you know, he was able to represent Bent here in the top four. But it's uh, it's William moving on to the finals, and then now we're actually going to end up seeing the two decks that you know going into like these players tours from you know going into players tour one. These were the two decks that uh, everyone was gunning for. It was uh, so John little Poo has and changed, and yet Timur so Rack. much has changed. <laughs> We've got John Sack versus Timur Reclamation in the finals of the players tour three. And I hope you guys will join us in just a few minutes for that. Riley, Voxy has a divine visitation in hand and a finale of glory. So this is a clip on top five, so you can probably assume what's going to happen. But would you believe me if I told you you won't believe what's going to happen next? We kind of bury the lead it because look at this. Voxy needs one more turn. There's one more turn, but what could go wrong? Oh, Gary's here to ruin the day. You hate to see it. Oh, I mean, and, and there's another world, and she's out of here. There, I, I, Vox is quitting Magic, which is understandable. But there's she's another world where goes. this was a top five clip for a very different reason, Dennis. Riley, what is going on here? What have we stumbled in on? Why does this opponent only have two lands? What went wrong? <laughs> <laughs> so this is after an Ajani ultimate, which has exiled all the creatures on the opposing side of the board for sure. But that has left our hero here with three Ajani's pride mates, three bloodthirsty aerialists, two soul wardens, and a Heliod, which means that all of these creatures that are coming off the top with this Bolas of Citadel are just generating more triggers than anyone knows how to count. Look at this. We need to put an epilepsy warning on this clip, mate. This is ridiculous. <laughs> it's insane. And look at this. The hits don't stop. I mean, every time I play a Bolas of Citadel, Dennis, every single time, it's just two lands on the top. Every single time, it's two lands. But look at this. Three creatures, another Ajani's welcome on top. Why not? I bet there'll be more creatures under this as well. This is insane. And of course, you can just attack for lethal. But no, Dennis, you need to assert your top This is, this is insane. <laughs> There's a tragedy laid out here clear as day, Riley. Yeah, I mean, look, so you usually think cast off with Realm Cloak Giant, it destroys all creatures, but it's actually destroy all non-giant creatures, and there's just no way to tell that Beanstalk Giant is a giant. There's no clue. We got a listener here, Riley. Numa feels like he doesn't need to practice for the player's tour because he's an accomplished Magic player already. Yeah, have a listen I'm in. already a Hall of Famer. I already have four PT top eights. Mox champion with Goyf. I really need to practice for it or... And he's immediately going to be punished for such hu hubris, Dennis. Look at this. Oh. The straight up, the straight up five for one with Fight with Fire. Oh, you love to see it. LSU's opponent here, Riley, going to slam a dire feet. Daredevil aren't able to find an answer for that Jura, but they've hit didn't say please they're going to said and Luis probably correctly it seems Curry, he didn't say please uh, I feel bad for my opponent now because that's clearly not what they meant to do and then just immediately play straight immediately into it immediately plays the counter spell they just put into their hand basically they, they just basically <laughs> like they misclicked into this didn't say please apparently and no you know what angry chicken is on another level entirely Thank you for watching, everyone. If you have your own suggestion for MTG Top 5, tweet them using the hashtag MTG Top 5 or post them on the Channel Fireball Discord server in the hashtag MTG Top 5 chat room. Hello everyone, Ashton Rose here with Christian Calcano, and we are going to be taking a look at the two finalists, William Craddock and Ray Hiriyama's decks, very shortly. Uh, these matches have been really, really fun to watch. Uh, yeah, we've seen some uh, some pretty sweet games, very, very swingy on multiple sides. And, uh, you know, in the end, here we are, with the finals with... Uh, you know, the two, like I said, consensus best decks going into the first week. And we have Jund here, uh, piloted by William Craddock. And, yeah, um, with the main deck, fairly stock. Um, but the sideboard is where most of the action is going to be. Okay. We've got those those four Duress and those four Regisaurs are definitely going to find their way in. Uh, I mean, the Cinder Vines is supposed to be for this matchup as well, but I'd be interested to see how he's going to fit all this stuff in. Perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. Well, what would he be taking out for this? Yeah, I feel like, so game one, you know, his hope is going to be to try to land Citadel and win that way. But I feel like game two, he's probably going to be taking out the Citadels and the claims. And that's six. And then possibly, 
maybe some some of like the uh, smaller creatures, like maybe some number of like familiar goose or priest. I guess priest isn't as great here. Uh, only one night pack ambusher out of Ray. So maybe we could see those go, but I feel like he's definitely, uh, you know, his plan is definitely going to be to try to get a Reggie on turn three, maybe even turn two uh, okay. with a turn one goose and try and like ride that to victory. All right. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at Ray's deck and see what we're looking at for him. Yeah. So Ray, um, he's got these gusts, which I think they'll be pretty solid game one because mm -hmm. um, William has a couple of core vaults. Yep. They and slow, the devils. They slow, they, they slow down the devils as well. Can you know can deal with like an early trail on turn two or whatnot. I think. Uh, I believe William is on the draw. It's funny. It was the seventh and eighth seeded players get getting their way to the finals. So, <laughs> so uh, Ray just will find himself. Show. On the Never, don't don't yeah. count yourself out. No, you just gotta just gotta make sure to make to the cut. But here we go. And then in the sideboard here, let me see. What are we gonna do here? Um, I'm not sure how great the Bone Crushers are, but we'll definitely be seeing the Dragon Fires, and we'll probably see the Uro, even though the claims like can be a problem. Like, still, I, th I think I think the life gain is going to be pretty relevant there, because you just want to kind of like live long enough until you can just go off with the Reclamation and the ex and the Explosion. So, I think we'll see some of those. We might even see the the Third Negate, because it, it helps to have. Uh, a way to kind of like make sure that Uro doesn't get stolen. So if you can mm -hmm. just slam Uro down and kind of protect it with a negate, that's like another path to victory as well. What do, what do you think Ray's going to take out? Let's see here. Um, I could see him taking out some number of gusts, but probably not all of them. Just because, you know, you are going to see uh, William bring in the the the, re the Regisaurs and the Duress. So, you know, Gus is not going to be great there, of course. So... I think we'll probably see some of those come out and maybe some of these disputes. I think dispute is probably fine on the play, but on the draw, it's not very great. On the play, it gives it gives Ray a, an opportunity to counter Regisaur before it lands. So we, we could very well even see all of them, but definitely should see a mix of them uh, when he's on the play. And then on the draw, he'll probably just take them all out. Okay. All right. Well, it sounds like... Uh, we are ready to head into the finals, so we are going to watch Ray Hiriyama playing Team of Reclamation and William Craddock on Jun Sacrifice, and we will see which one of them will come out victorious, walking away with $8,000 and an invite to the Players' Tours Finals. Buckle up. Hello everyone. Um, so we're here with uh, the finals here. Uh, Amy, can you hear us? All right. Um, all right. Okay. Hello there. Hi, everybody. I was muted by the devil that is Skype, but I'm back <laughs> now to welcome you to the player store number three. We are in the finals match now, and we've got a couple words from Rei Hirayama about making it to the finals. I'm feeling good and lucky <laughs> right now, staying here. Like, my opponent had bad draws twice in a row in the semifinals, and yes. And um, if I win, or even if I lose, I will go uh, eat with my friends, which helped me test for this tournament. Aww. That's pretty, that's pretty wholesome. That's Definitely. very nice. You, you, love a, you love a good uh, post-players tour dinner. I'm sure it's going to be on Ray. <laughs> so here we go. We've got an exciting start from both players. We see Double Priest with Claim at the Ready, Trail Crumbs and Witch's Oven. Up against an early wilderness reclamation. Yeah, double double gust out of Ray, which is not great, but double priest uh, is not really a way for 
William to pressure Ray. So I think Ray, even though still short on lands here and doesn't really have like a, a way to deal with these priests, I think he's still feeling somewhat good about his situation right now. So who are you rooting for in this match? Uh, it's hard. I don't know. It's hard to pick a side, but like. Uh, I, I've been I've been playing Teamer all week. I've been championing it, so I think I'm just gonna go with the the Teamer menace. <laughs> well, that's excellent because I'm over here rooting for you know it, William Craddock <laughs> on that Jund. The Jund sacrifice. It might be kind of old hat at this point, but it's a good <laughs> deck. It's oh, a no, real good deck. No, definitely, definitely a great deck, and uh, proving that it's still one of the top contenders in the format here. So no explosion yet from Ray, but double double wreck with Castle is still pretty nice. So definitely can't be mad at that. Oh wow, not 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 gonna hold the shark back here. Oh, and to be clear, I am rooting both for Jun and rooting against the teamer reclamation. <laughs> the, the double wreck there is pretty fun. Uh, we get to see lots of scrying happen with these castles. Let's see here. Well, one one more land closer to to that but citadel. Citadel, except not quite. Need more black mana. That's just another rule source. Ooh, Who even needs uh, that? Maybe I'm not sure if he. What? Oh, that's brutal. That's brutal. Well, you yeah. get black mana. Yeah, from but the sacrifice. Yes, but, but unfortunately, um, Auto Tapper decided to ruin the play. Yeah, <gasps> Auto Tapper. Yeah, that's that's rough for William there. Oh no, no, she William, no. Did. Oh no, that's rough. Yeah, I mean, he had that play set up, but yeah, I mean, you definitely hate to see it, but the you know that game was still oh, gonna be no, rough really. there. Real villain is Auto Tapper. Yeah, Auto Tapper will get you. That's for sure. But you know, I mean, it's the finals. Got to shrug it off. You got a good side. Got to remember, time. these players have been doing the equivalent of running a magic marathon. They have been playing for an entire day. Yeah. Missteps are going to happen. Everybody's on edge. These are the finals, and while they are both incredible players on incredible decks, misplays happen. No, yeah, it's definitely gonna happen. But William, as you as you can saw, he was very confident in his sideboarding. He's ready to roll. So and he's on the play, so he knows he's uh he's definitely favored in this game at the very least. So let's see if William can can bounce back from that. Ray's still in the tank over there on sideboarding. Let me see here. Yeah, looks like we're definitely going to see those dragon fires that are almost likely the ambushers. That's about it, probably. I'm not sure if he's going to want the crushers on the draw. I think only if he expects William to keep in the priest, but I don't think he will. I think he'll just forsake those for the uh, uh, for the Reggies and the Duresses. So. So I think that we can play their sideboarding plans while we wait for Ray to finish up that sideboard. Oh, nice. Here we go. Um, okay, so I don't play any um, dragon fires in my main deck, so I'm going to play all of them in. And um, depending on whether I play first or second, um, I'm going to board in Mystical Disputes or Bone Crusher Giants. Okay, so so that means that he that means that we are going to see the Bone Crusher Giants on the draw here. They're not bad because they're not they're not they're not that bad because they can kill the uh, the Woe Strider on the draw if that's their turn three play. But it's still going to be pretty rough against the Regisaur. There 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 is the Bone Crusher right there. You get to see yeah, that. Yeah, keeping the one lander, but you got the goose. That's another mana source there. Yeah, I mean if yeah if William would have drawn a land there, turn two. Turn two register just would have ended the game on the spot, basically. But very tough, tough draw for William here because his bone crusher is gonna. It's Debbie. It's stomp. stepping on that goose. Yeah, stomp on this poor little goose. Oh, don't stomp on geese. 
They might yeah. be terrible, terrible animals, but they deserve better than that. <laughs> oh, those giants. But yeah, here we go with the art. I do Still. love this early Cinder Vines, though. I have personally won some games off of Cinder Vines, just eating away at the opponent's life total because all they're doing is they're like, I'm going to growth spiral, growth spiral, going to play a Teferi if you're up against Bant, going to just drop down all these spells, and each and every time they're going to be taking a little bit of damage. By the way, big time draw for William. He was able to find Runner Runner Land to be able to slam the Regisaur under the dispute. And with And double Reggie. Yeah, yeah with with uh with Ray opting to play the giant here to be able to set up a chump block plus a dragon fire. Uh William was able to sneak in the second Regisaur into the dispute again. So this is secretly a Jun Dino's deck. <laughs> this Dino's. is fantastic. This is also very, very, very tough to deal with. You'd need to block and Scorching Dragonfire just to take one of those out. Uh, Gus, yeah. do not hit Rotting Regisar. And nope. every time you cast one of these non-creature spells, you are again taking damage off the Cinder Vines. Yep. So we see and We're we just seeing the question, can he, can he charge the Blast Zone in time? That Blast Zone can only be ticked up one itty-bitty counter a turn yeah, at the no. current number of lands. Yeah, no, it's turn four and no fifth land here. So it's definitely going to be tough. I think he has no choice but to wreck here. It takes one, but the difference between 12 and 11 is not very big here. He's going to go, let's see, you can wreck, go to 11, block, dragon fire, go to 10, Spiral, go to nine. Registrar hits you to seven. Go to two. You're alive for a turn with and that gu plan. Gust of Vines, go to one. Dispute it on the way down. <laughs> it's going to be tough, though. It's definitely going to be tough. All right. No cards to discard. Pass that Woe Strider. Oh, look, it's another Woe Strider. Yeah, pretty solid nice draw card. there. Uh, I'm sure William is happy about that one. Cuff, boom, going down to five. And so bring out the Woe Strider. So Ray opted not to play the wreck here, just opting to try to keep his life total as high as possible here. I think going for the Scorching Dragonfire here, very smart. Take out that dinosaur before it can be sacrificed for a scry. Unfortunately, put yourself very, very low left total wise. Now, either an attack from the Woe Strider or the Rotting Registrar would close out this game. There's the land, but no wreck means that he's unable to fire up the Blast Zone. Yeah, if you that's played game. These are two extremely fast games happening here. Moving into game three. Yeah, I was gonna say if he had played, if he had played the wreck, he'd be on two, but then he'd be able to fire up the zone up to three and then untap and be able to sack it there. But then he'd still have to deal with the cinder vines, of course. Let's go, let's go, Jund. Yeah, game three see now. It. I want to see another dino, dino stop happen. Looks like we have a clip, I believe. You know, we actually we do have a clip from Ray about how he wanted these games to play out. Uh, can we play that? And in the post board games, like they have so much hate cards for the Timber Re Reclamation deck, and um, I want the game to go quite long before the Regi rotting Regisaur beats me up. Yeah, I would agree with that for sure. Definitely, like, Registor is the last card you want to see on the uh, other side of the battlefield there. You want to try to live as long as possible to make a big explosion. And So let's see if Ray can do that here. Oh, oh, that's actually a pretty fun opening hand. Yeah, double uh, duress. Very Rakdos. You've got double duress, Registar, War Strider, depending on the situation, if you end up, like, picking up a priest on two. Yeah, who needs uh, oh who needs gosh. green mana? But yeah, th being able to duress that hand, taking out the filtering when all it's got is some bone crushers. Unfortunately, that other bone crusher giant doesn't get hit by Ooh. duress. 
Wow, second Reggie here. That's that's big time draw again. Are Ops. we gonna see a repeat of game one? Are we going or uh, game two? Are we going to see the double dinosaur beatdown? Fingers yeah. crossed. I want uh, it. I need it. Ops to not to rest there. I think I might have even though you know like that Ray has all but, you know, one card, even though you know all but one card. I think you have to go for it there just because it lets you make sure that the coast is clear on turn three. Because if, uh, yeah, like if Ray had a dispute there, that he'd be able to, he'd be able to counter the Reggie on three. But he slams the Bone Crusher here, so the coast is yeah, most definitely clear. How do you clear. deal with Registar with the Reclamation deck? Early on, it's pretty much impossible. Late game, you can take it out with an explosion, but that's a you're using up an explosion mm -hmm. to do that. There's the dispute, by the way. So, oh, um, dispute can hit that second Regisar. Yeah, we're gonna see the duress Unless here. Unless it has to be discarded. Yeah, and basically, if he wants any hope of dealing with the with the Reggie in play, he's gonna have to let that resolve. The second so. Registrar, still a secret. Could see a trade here, Bone Crusher Giant, plus the stomp from the second Bone Crusher Giant to take out this here dino. Maybe going to have to see it. I think that's the only way that Ray is going to survive. Yeah. Reggie number two, goodbye hand, but... Uh, oh no, that's right. This first Reggie is You guys is can dead. tell, I'm, I'm very, very happy about dinosaurs. This necklace I'm wearing is not A for Amy. It's actually A for Ark, which is just a, a dinosaur game. Oh, nice. Do you like my dinos? <laughs> Who like my dinos? Ooh, discard, discards the core wall to bring back the Strider. You've got enough fuel in the graveyard to bring back Strider. Not Cinder Vines there, interestingly. So this, also, this dragon fire off the top is gonna allow Ray to be able to two for one himself again to get rid of the second Regisaur. But now this, uh, you know, the Strider is uh, still a big threat here. But a uh, a reclamation into an explosion could oh could be okay. good enough here. I like I like that the yep. the dragon fire before damage resolves. So That's, you have to do that so it doesn't just get sacrificed. Yep. Registar is dead. Both players kind of in top deck mode here, but Ariyama oh, wow. not not having a great card in hand. We see a scry into another Woe Strider. There's a Cinder Vines down, able to take out a Reclamation. Ping yeah, was, for all the non-creature spells that get cast. Yeah, that was a perfect draw for William there. Give, gives him a, a great turn here with the double spell. Two very powerful ones at that. Bottom, bottom. Definitely uh, not ideal for Ray there. A bottom <laughs> spiral and pull. And ooh. Mm, Night Peak Ambusher with only one, one green, green mana. Source. That's no. devastating. That's definitely, it feels bad. Ray sitting here with the dog. That honestly, that play. that Night Peak Ambusher could have really brought Ray back into this game, but being stuck on single green is pretty brutal. Yeah, would have been able to block that first Woe Strider, generate a token. Yeah. Uh, block the second Woe Strider every single turn using the tokens being generated. Instead, we're seeing potentially just a, a game get ended here. A second Cinder Vines. Oh, no. Right, you are not in a good spot. Big time draw there. And yeah, I really, I don't see, there's no storm drafts in raises. See much of a way out here. Looks like Democratic just going threat after threat after threat. Here comes the wilderness reclamation, unable to even impact this game state. In fact, would end the game even sooner by giving a target for the cinder vines. Wow, and there and it that's is. game. William Craddock, our champion from Blair's Tour Three. Incredible Jun sacrifice, taking home the gold, playing the dinosaurs, kicking butt. What amazing games! Yeah, that was that was pretty. That was some pretty good stuff. Uh, pretty awesome from Will to be able to come back from that first game, little mishap, and just you know he's got a good cyber plan. He's ready to roll. 
you know, he's very confident and, you know, the Regisaurus came through for him and uh, he's our champion. Absolutely. Fantastic. I'm so happy that we got to see these games and cast them. Uh, I know both of us have been up in absurd number of hours and so have the <laughs> players they've been going all day all night i don't even know what time zone it is for anybody here but fantastic magic being played here love to see this variety of deck lists making it to top eight we had two mirror matches in the first round in the quarterfinals but since then it has been wonderful matchups loved getting to see gem sacrifice camera reclamation matchup feels kind of like it was a few months ago, but even spicy. 